Hello, and welcome to the March 13th Psych Board meeting. Uh, the board is present minus Tom. We have the town manager, the town clerk, members of the public. Um, let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, first, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from February 20th. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. Uh, first public comment. Yes, please. Step right up here. Name and address. Good evening. My name is Michelle Manning, and I live at 38 Logan Street, my husband and I and family. My husband and I purchased 40 Logan Street house next door five years ago, and now we're trying to sell it. We have a young couple that wants to move in. They're expecting their second, and we're running into a title issue. And apparently common sense doesn't work in a court of law. So I wanted to see what the town of Berwick might be able to do to help reconcile this situation. I know the contention is Penny Pond Project donated the land, the two right-of-ways that are on my property, next to my property. But it shows in the original plan of Penny Pond Project that they are designated as right-of-ways. Now, we've been using it for over 30 years. Some neighbors even paved it. Nobody's ever said that we couldn't use it. And I am paying taxes on both lots. So I know the town cannot landlock people. So I'm hoping they can come to a simple solution. I did the historic deed search all the way back to 1899 when my property was built. And it seems that right away was there way back when. We were told by the realtor that the right of way was so Mrs. Ireland can reach her property. She owned a very large lot. She's the heiress to the Lords. They owned a lot of Berwick. Um, so now here it is. I have a couple that on March 1st were supposed to close to buy this house we're trying to sell. And it wasn't until this afternoon that the town lawyer was able to speak with my lawyer, who's handling the closing, and they want me to go to the main department of DOT. My contention is we've been here a lot longer than the Penny Pond Project. There's paperwork that documents it's a right of way. I don't feel I need to have my lawyer on retainer to call the DOT, because I wouldn't even know where to start. So I'm hoping the Board of Selectmen might be able to do something, a suggestion. Uh, the town manager has been working with me and the realtor, and, but the title company has basically begged out and laid it all onto me. So now I've lost five months of rent to pay the mortgage, and I'm, I'm kind of pushing now in hopes that you folks can make it so we can keep driving on this right of way that we've been using for three decades. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? All right. Uh, close public comment. We have no public hearings or uh, approvals, no committee reports, no department reports. Um, appointments. Daniel Hook wishes to be appointed to Envision Berwick for a two-year term. Is Daniel here? I can speak on behalf of Dan, if that's Please. appropriate. Uh, known Dan for the past several months, since he um, first attempted to be appointed to planning board and the seats were filled, 
he reached out for Envision Berwick, and he's attended conference comprehensive plan meetings, community garden meetings, Envision Berwick. Um, he's just another person that has a lot of energy and some good ideas. So I think it'd be a great addition to the group. Do we have any questions or comments about Daniel Hope? No, there's Jeremy around. I was going to say Jeremy's in there. Jeremy, anything you want to add? It's probably a listener. <laughs> no. Yep, here he goes. There he goes. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Do you want to? <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Hope wants to be appointed. Uh, oh, yes, but I don't see him here. No. Would you do uh, is. Uh, is that a good appointment, do you think? Oh, my goodness. Is it ever? Okay, uh, yes. <laughs> Daniel Hook has been coming to meetings for about a year now. Uh, he's been uh, involved. He was very involved with the uh, event we put on at, uh, at Corner Point for the uh, relaunch of the uh, Berwick Historical Society. His wife actually came and took pictures for us. Um, he's got a young family. He's also um, really been civic-minded outside of just Envision Berwick with um, the Sustainability Committee and uh, been uh, a vocal advocate for uh, the notion of opening Berwick up for more um, uh, uh, bike routes and bike lanes so that uh, we can bring more tourism that way. And just a great guy and uh, loves the town. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I will make a motion to appoint Daniel Hook to a two-year term on New Vision Berwick. Last second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? You made it on. Uh, we have no unfinished business. Town Manager's report. The MSAD 60 students through the Access Program will be visiting Town Hall in a couple weeks. Students will be learning a little bit about what goes on around Town Hall. Uh, Libby Scott has offered a uh, contract extension for our paving contract for the year. And with their extension, they only increased on materials that have increased for them. So my recommendation uh, for consideration would be to extend the contract similar to what we did last year. And the main reason is we do not, no longer seem to have competition, local competition in the area. Um, I've reached out to paving companies and there's a lack of response and it just seems like Libby Scott is the only one that's coming that's close on price. And eager to do the work. Eager to do the work and just extend the contract again just like last year just give us a head start on scheduling and things like that. Would you like to just, like, let us see that right now? That'd be great. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that idea? No, I think we Put it back out to bid, like James said, a couple yeah. times the last few years, and nothing's we come either back get nothing or and nothing. Just Libby Scott, or we get yeah. Libby Scott and somebody who is not, dramatically over. Yeah, not close, right. and, and definitely put yeah. it there. So, no. I'll make a motion that we extend our paving contract with Libby Scott for another year. A second that. Second. Any further discussion? Third or fourth. All those in favor? <laughs> uh, up there on the Mullen Street project. We had some neighbors reach out with concerns. We had some folks at planning board. And I believe this week we've been able to alleviate at least some of the most serious concerns that they've had. Um, some of the details on the project for the Mullen Street. The travel lanes on Mullen Street are nine feet, which are very narrow than typical, but it's an older historic street. To go along with it, we have five foot paved swales. And there is some contention about why we are extending with five foot swales. Uh, the main main purpose is if you go any narrower with a, a paved swale because it dips down, you have more of an abrupt dip that becomes a tripping hazard where a five-foot swale really acts more as a sidewalk. Uh, so it, ser it serves a purpose to maintain the integrity of the road and prevents erosion. Um, and just clearing up some other things on the project, um, we're raising the center line five inches, so we're raising the center of Moulton Street to help the water come down. But by the time the road gets to the driveways, it ties into the existing grade. So there are some concerns about potentially flooding people's basements. Uh, I believe we were able to you know, meet that concern to 
show that the driveway will be draining down into the drainage swale. So um, the whole purpose of doing the Mullen Street project is to prevent erosion and just improve the stormwater system out there. Um, so most of the storm drains are in. They've been, all the old storm drains have been replaced with new storm drains. The first coat of pavement is due by the end of, or it's expected by the end of May, beginning of June. Um, you'll, we'll start seeing work on the filter pond. They're working on the filter pond. And into the spring and summer, there'll be some landscaping. So by the end of May and June, that will be in pretty good shape. And then the project will be final paved in August. So we expected that project to be completely done by August. Now this is the MSAD, what is the project MS, The MS4. MS4, there we go. Um, this is the project we've been talking about for like five years now, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. So, um, and it's all good with the state? Everything's happy with all that stuff? Yep. It was, this was reviewed by our stormwater engineer. Uh, it was designed to, you know, to meet the deficiencies of our stormwater system. Terrific. Anything else? Got three more. Uh, paving of the courts at Memorial Field is scheduled for May. Hopefully beginning of May. In May. Um, several properties went to tax foreclosure. There's two property owners in total. Six properties. So the one property owner had five properties go to tax foreclosure. Um, they have 60 days from notice to pay the entire back taxes where we follow our policy, which we end up having to sell the property. And now the, with the way the law is, we have to, we, all you those pay, proceeds go to yeah, the- Yeah, you pay the taxes and then the whatever's left over goes back to the original owner. Yep. Got it. yep. And last thing, I just want to recognize Shannon and Josh for their work with the Sweetheart Dance. I think Shannon, again, did an incredible job. Just all the little, just, I know she was um, running a photo booth and just making the night special and providing keepsake for folks. folks. So great job. And I can please report. Thank you. Any questions from the town manager? Thank you much. James. All right. Uh, Sick board communications. Uh, nothing terribly exciting. Comcast is changing the name of some stations. And uh, in terms of the board, there's an election for the uh, York County uh, Budget Committee, which only elected officials can go to and vote on. So a lot of exciting fun there. Uh, approval of accounts payable and payroll warrants. Payroll warrant number 60 from February 29th in the amount of $81,960.31. Accounts payable warrant number 61 from February 29th in the amount of $153,123.17. Accounts payable warrant number 62 from February 29th in the amount of $67,919.99. Payroll warrant number 63 from March 7th, in the amount of $84,950.28. Payroll warrant number 64 from March 7th, in the amount of $295.82. Payroll warrant number 65 from March 14th, in the amount of $81,974.38. Accounts payable warrant number 66 from March 12th in the amount of $1,156,639.37. Accounts payable warrant number 67 from March 12th in the amount of $23,880.36. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? What was the one for like $200? I think that was just a missed paycheck. Got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and further discussion? All those in favor? 
<laughs> You're funny. You asked about the, the, the small one. I asked about the big one. <laughs> <laughs> see the big one. I'm like, huh? Uh, all right. Uh, new business. March 5th state presidential. Yep, state and presidential primary election results. Yeah, we had a total of 1,147 voters, um, which is a pretty good turnout for a primary. Um, I was surprised by the number, but would like it to be higher, of course. So thank you to all who voted. Um, obviously, Biden and Trump took their party. So we're on to June 11th, next election, 8 to 8. It's a state primary um, town budget town meeting election and MSAD budget validation. So please come out. That's the important one. That's the important one for local people. And changes to the land use ordinance too. Yes. Yes. Yep. And electing two members of select board and one for um, school board. The school school board. board. Yep. Terrific. That was June 11th, right? June 11th. Nobody tell me that we didn't tell you. June 11th. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, On-premise liquor license for Untrucked. Is there a representative from Untrucked here who wants to speak about this? Yeah, I'm in the podium. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. I just came from there because I had somebody call out. I apologize. <laughs> I'm a little late. Um, I'm, is there any questions that you would prefer to ask me, or did you just want me to speak about kind of what we were looking to do? Tell us what you're looking to do. So we're just looking to get a beer and wine license. Um, nothing fancy. We're not looking to be late night. Just um, beer, wine, and some RTDs. RTDs of, of course, under eight percent when you have a beer and wine license. So no pours, just cans. Um, just Coronas to go with your tacos. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. Um, it's just something that we've gotten a lot of feedback from from the community. They've been very interested. Um, I can't really go a day without somebody asking if we have some form of alcohol, so we just want to <laughs> give them what they're asking for, <laughs> within reason. No, I, I understand that. My, my brother ran a pizza restaurant, and it was just like, you know, everybody wanted to have beer and wine, too, and it's just like, it's just a pizza place, and they're just like, no, but, you know, yep. so they ended up having to do that, too, yep. so I understand. All. Um, all right, does anybody have any questions? Everything looks filled out by the state. Yeah, it's all pretty pretty well filled out and all pretty good. I'll make a motion to approve the on-premise liquor license for Untra. I believe it's effective 318 this year to 318 next year. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I think you're all set. Thank you. All right. Uh, quick claim deeds, abatements, none. Second public comment. Okay. All right. So um, tonight's going to be a little interesting. We have an executive session, um, which we're going to do after we do our parking workshop and our final budget workshop, hopefully. And so essentially we're going to... Uh, go into recess for those two items, go into the executive session, come back out, there'll be no decisions made in the executive session or the workshops, uh, so there'll be no voting. Uh, so we're going to be out of the video for that part. Um, does anybody have any other business on agenda items to bring up? I am also abreast of anything, so... I think we are all set to uh, enter our workshops. So I think we're in recess. Um, all right. Up there is the and there's eight of you here. There's, there's, there's obviously the eight seats. Um, we're just here today, just as a. No, no, I'm serious. The downtown has developed leaps and bounds since I think a lot of us have gotten together in the same room. So it's just a good opportunity to get together and just talk about what we see for opportunities, oh, okay. challenges, and just try to be together and communicate and just be on the same page as the downtown continues to develop. So first thing on the agenda is just a simple introduction. And if you want to start, I'll start. And I'll start. <laughs> so, I'm James. I'm the town manager, and I'm happy to be here. 
We're the select board. <laughs> and we're all happy to be here. We all have the name. All is one. <laughs> Please, Allison. Hi, I'm Allie. I own the Bad Wolf Butcher right there on 12 Sullivan Street. Uh, my name is Alyssa. I am the co-owner of Untrapped. I'm Jamie. I own Corner Point Brewing. I'm Kat. I own Six Sullivan, which houses Untrapped, Truth Custom Tattoo, and Rooted in Flow Yoga. <laughs> I'm Dennis Stupri. I own Devin Duke Barn and Rams. I'm Becky Hull. I am the property manager at JCS Property Management um, over at the Ridge. I'm John Smith with Great Falls Construction awesome. and JCS. Yeah. Terrific. Thanks, guys. Thanks nice for being here. Yes. Yeah. Thank well, you. I'm glad being that here. everybody showed up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, is, this is the majority of the, the people here. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's a topic of a lot of interest. So Sure. Um, I think the real number one challenge that we're facing is is limited parking opportunities in the downtown right now as it currently sits um, we have a lot of interest in the businesses downtown which is great uh, you know uh, corner point is always stacked especially on weekends and nights things like that you have the town hall right there so during the day you have a lot of town hall people coming and going parking bad wolf Dominoes and people coming and going for that. Also, delivery drivers coming and going. Uh, and when there's an event downtown, like uh, the the music festival, we you know, uh, what's that called? I can't remember. That. Lawn chairs. Lawn chairs. Yes, thank you. You know, when there's lawn chairs um, or something like the uh, the parades, things like that. There's always a scarcity of parking opportunities. And uh, it gets pretty hectic down there. Um, and we know that when the edge is completed, it's supposed to have like what two hundred more spaces of parking. Is that what it's supposed to be? It'll be, uh, yeah. I think the count officially is close to three hundred. Um, and does that include the lot? Does not so it's about 300 um, and then another 75 to 100 on the, um, the lot right on the corner of Sullivan and Wilson Street. So okay, so that 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 parking lot is that going to be like redone or like like repaved or something? Yeah, that's slated to actually be a DOT is we're, we're working with the DOT and have an arrangement with them. They're going to be part of that is going to be park and ride officially a park and ride. Yeah. And then the other part is just going to be open open parking. Okay. And obviously, you guys are going to have apartments, people, you know, living in units. So that's going to account for a good portion of that parking space and stuff like that. Um, and the other challenge is obviously um, handicap parking as well. There's very limited handicap parking in the downtown area. There's what? Two spaces total. Three. Three. Yep. So, um, does anybody else want to talk about any other challenges that we're facing right now that I didn't just enumerate? I would just say, um, with the growing commercial units, that means more like commercial deliveries. So we're seeing a lot more eighteen wheelers and stuff staying on our main road here like and we're guilty of it too we have 18 wheelers come in so i think one of the solutions is like well and we're not talking solutions or yeah. problems but whatever okay. <laughs> <laughs> um we try to get all of our delivery trucks to go down the alley next to us i think keeping delivery trucks off sullivan street is something we should talk about okay and off i mean off sullivan square in general yeah. they park for a while so oh yeah it takes absolutely. up a lot of space yeah and and you're you're 100 right about that they take up a lot of space and they can take a lot of time, to pay by the hour. So yeah. <laughs> there was a two and a half hour long delivery today. In really? Yeah. That's <laughs> taking out like six spots downtown. Yeah. So. And you know, and that's just you, but also, I think Domino's gets stuff delivered daily. I think is what. Yeah, it was Domino's. It wasn't us. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Not to like. No, that's <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> no but uh, yeah. I think I, I do believe that one of Domino's things is that they have fresh dough every day, yeah, yeah. which means yeah. they truck it in every day. Right. Same thing with same thing with Dunkin' Donuts. Every morning Dunkin' Donuts 18 wheelers and box trucks are all over the place because they deliver fresh donuts every morning. So. Um, yeah, that's a very good point as well. 
Um, any other challenges that we might not be aware of? Um, we own Devin Dukes. I've been in business for 33 years and 27 at that spot right there. Um, I've seen a lot of things come and go. Debbie and I over the years few, put a few dollars into downtown to renovate some things. Um, so we've had functions at the restaurant. We'd have 80 people upstairs, 55 on the second floor, the hair salon, tanning, everything like that. So we could bring in a few hundred, 150 cars at any given night, which we did. Uh, it all seemed to work because basically we took the time to tell people if you're going to have a function, I work with Reverend Al across the street, which we used to be at the corner point yep. where Jamie is. And, you know, we were able to use the back out back because he wasn't there. Talk to Kenny Bunk Bank, the old church. So we all worked together. For this to work, we all have to educate each other and work together. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. if you look at it, when they do studies, and I own Subway, and that place is all parked, and it's there, people, for two and a half, three hours, four hours, and I'm driving through town, and I look at it, and it's the last spot for me to grab something to go home, and I say, oh, freak that. I'm not going in there. Can you imagine the thousands and thousands of dollars that a sandwich place will own, any business, whether it's picking up steaks, I want to go to Jamie's, ah, geez, you know, I can't get in there tonight, I'm going home and have a beer and a sandwich. If you don't work together and educate each other on how this can work incrementally in different spots, but it all comes down to the staff. My staff this winter got lazy and a couple of them were parking in. I said, go, get back up there. Mm -hmm. You can't park there. I can't come down and park in front of Deb and Dukes for an hour and a half because Subway could lose five stops at 12 bucks a piece and at the end of the year they just lost four or $5,000 and that's his tax bill. That's how crucial this is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, so the other thing that I'd like to touch base with is, and I have a question for John, are you looking to keep that parking lot a parking lot for the next thousand years? Which one? The one? The big one, the 120 spots. So With the parking ride and everything else, it might overflow. Is that your plan? Right now, that's our plan. I mean, it's obviously a nice piece of land, yeah. but we really feel like as we as the edge sort of gets developed, um, it you know it needs to um, it needs that as a support lot, you right. know, until and then as as it develops and sort of um, the the area matures a little bit, the the edge matures a little bit, and makes sense. We would then know if you know kind of where we stand. We'll know whether that works as a surface lawn and is necessary, whether it needs to be four stories of parking there because this is not enough, or whether it can be a, a developable site. You know, but for right, now, for right now, I can't commit to a thousand years, but I can tell you, <laughs> for right now, that's because our actually, way what of we're working on, John, and you know, and we hope that it's it's awesome. Is is this is do over? The canvas is blank. He's painting it. The whole group's painting it. You're all supporting that, that canvas. My question is, Dover, after 100 years, got a parking garage. Memorial, uh, Wentworth Douglas, after being there for 85 years, got a parking garage. With grants available, why can't we get on the phone and say to King Angus, come down here, bring Sue with you, bring Shelly Pingree and, and Jerry Golden, get them all down here, we're looking at $4 million to go up another level. But don't wait 75 years. Because all of a sudden, somebody buys the metal building and turns it into a 150-seat restaurant across the street. They're parking in my front yard, and they're down the ball diners. So here's an opportunity where, in my opinion, after 27 years of saying, we have to educate each other. I can't be parked in front of Devin Dukes. And to be honest, Ben can't be parked in front, of, in front of his business if somebody's going into Subway, or somebody's coming to Devin Dukes, or somebody wants to go to, to Untruck. We're all doing you an injustice. By parking mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So it's like going in and having a form and breaking it all down as we come to whatever things that we come to, whether it's 15 minutes out front, an hour and a half across the street. I mean, I used to own all that stuff, and, and, I, and I worked hard to make it work. Once in a while, one person would say, oh, I had to park over here with the employees parking in town. Would you go to Portsmouth? Yeah. Well, where you park? In a parking garage, it's awesome. 
Oh, really? You park over there in the parking garage, walk a mile and a half to that restaurant down on State Street, but you won't park over here and walk 60 seconds. Those people, you know, it's like, that's how you get around that. And then they go, oh, sorry. Hmm? We, do, we don't want anybody to lose any business. And, and, and if you got the people going upstairs for the, for, what is that, a, uh, I'm not good at that, is that aerobics or? Uh, yoga. Yoga. Mm -hmm. yoga. And, and, and on a Sunday morning, and across the street is wide open, then, then walk across the street, put your 12 cars there, instead of having 12 cars there. And we're not there, so it doesn't bother me. And Spencer Matthews is not there. But I'm looking at subway and untrucked. So again, it's that mentality. Oh, I'm driving through downtown Dover, and I came all the way to downtown Dover because I want to go to Harvey's Bakery. i got to go park in the parking garage, but I have a place to go. But it's not in front of the building. But I've said that's my goal, and I will go park in the parking garage because that's my goal. The people that decide not to do this, whatever businesses we put in, they're going to say, over time, they're just going to drive by. That's why you have takeouts. That's why you have drive-ins. That's why Dunkin' Donuts did what it did 35 years ago. Villa Pizza, they're not going to survive. Summers with House, Tom, he said, Denny, I ain't going to make it. 35 years ago, I've been doing this stuff for that long. He says, I, gotta have, I don't care how many cars I get, 20, I won't make it. People aren't going to stop here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when they're coming over that bridge. Mm -hmm. But I can bring it to the front door. That's what I have to say on this stuff is really educating and saying we really have to care about each other. Mm -hmm. And if it means just walking back up here where all employees park up here, mm -hmm. I don't care if the downtown is wide open and there's nobody there. But when it comes time for somebody to drive through and go to Jamie's or go to Hunt Truck to go, you know, pick up all the meats for the week at the butcher shop, stop in and get your teeth clean, whatever it might be, Domino's, it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. This is my, my thought on this. And I'm going to end it with this. Think about this for a minute. Think about going to Dover, going to Durham. We've been to Rip we, we actually went to Gorham to see that place. Beautiful. And you drive through these towns, downtown Dover, Rochester, where you got massive, I mean, 400 apartments right there with no parking. 400. Two massive buildings. We need to get ahead of them. We need to find out if John's going to have that parking ride and everything like that. And, and you know, Cindy and, and, and Julie are going to have that whole thing all set up, and you're going to make some money on it. And we've got a second layer up there. And if the infrastructure that's going all around the square, electricity, is going to go on the ground, and if it's going to go on the ground on Wilson Street, then let's get some extra money from the folks up in, up in Augusta and put a bridge across the street instead of having 6,000 people cross over, ding, hit the green light, ding, hit the green light. Because where we're headed... Is every day that you see voting day and you've got 6,000 people coming voting day, that day is coming where it's going to be every day. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's going to be every day. That's coming. 2035, it's going to be like downtown Dover. You better have a plan when you're going there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Jewelry Creations, Hobbies, the bank, or wherever I'm going, I have a plan. I go, I get my things, and I get out. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I have to say. That's enough. So what about the possibility of building a parking garage? You like that idea? <laughs> I know. I mean, we've we've batted around. I mean, I I don't I don't really envision how we could do it as a private company and make it work. I right. don't really know how that works, but um, but I think that I mean I've got lots of things to say on parking in general because we have this you know we have this discussion quite a bit, um, and I think. You know, like we're huge advocates for shared parking, which is really basically what we're talking about. So, the idea of designating parking for this business, or that business, or even this tenant or that tenant, we don't we don't buy into that at all because that's just too much asphalt if you really if you compartmentalize it like that. So, shared parking, we're strong advocates for, but it does come with these particular challenges that that like Dennis just alluded to, and um, I think one of the one of the big things I've always said when it comes to the, the parking challenge, like, and when we when we do a development, I, I said it when we went for approval on this one, like, we want um, kind of a, a healthy amount of challenge when it comes to parking because if we have, if there's never a parking problem, we've got too much asphalt on the ground, right? If there's always a parking problem, we've got too much building on the ground. So trying to find that sweet spot is really, really important. One of the things we liked about this development is that lot that you're just talking about, 
because it kind of acts as a buffer. Even though it's not far right now, although it feels like it's on the, on the other side of town, but as we build closer to it and sort of connect to it, it's going to feel closer. So it's always it's going to really be a good buffer. It's a great spot. Um, some of the things that Dennis was talking about, and we, we really um, like to talk about with our tenants a lot, is just um, the things you have control over are where do your employees park. Um, and, you know, it is... Um, that, that's something to pay close attention to because every spot that's taken up is a spot that's taken up. So that lot there can certainly be ideal for employee parking, for someone to park there for an extended period of time. Um, obviously, there are challenges to that if you've got a, you know, later in the evening situation, one or two employees, then, you know, at some point they need to bring the vehicle closer to the establishment just for safety reasons and things like that. But, um but I think the, the answer is in really trying to understand what what you can control. And I think, you know, that's, I'm speaking to the employee, like your employee parking situations there. But also the other thing I always say, like, um, it's really up to the business to make sure that they put out an offering that people will come to. They'll find a way to come to it. And we've got lots of examples. And I think we've got, you know, so far the, the people that are doing business over at the edge, they, they do that. They've got offerings that people will come to. But, you know, it's a challenge. I mean, new anything new and a change, it, and, you know, it, it, people have to get used to it. Um, so I think that's um, – the, the other thing, though, that businesses do have control over is when, when and how their deliveries come. They, you know, they really can dictate that a little bit, not, not you know, explicitly, but they can dictate it a little bit as far as how they approach their business – and um, and sometimes maybe when they approach it. So I think, you know, thinking about all that, and I think the other point that Dennis brought up, I don't know quite how he said it, but working together as businesses um, is certainly a whole lot better than not, you know. And I think that's a, that's a key component to um, how to move as much sort of longer-term parking away to make room for customers as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just for sake of clarity, the, the lot uh, on Wilson Street, can people use that now? Like, I mean, like, I want, I'm driving home and I want to stop at Bad Wolf and there's no parking there, there's no parking at the town hall, and I just drive up there and I can park there and there's no problem at all? With right, that? right, yeah. It's a, it's a private parking lot, but it's basically utilized as a public lot. It's utilized sort of unofficially as park and ride now, right? But it's it's actually, I mean, I think we've signed the documents with the DOT. Matter of fact, I think we signed them. I can't remember because it was so long ago. They were going to do it last year. I do think it's slated to get redone. I don't know, if James, if you know any more than I do about Maybe it. Maybe this, this year. It's slated to happen. Yeah, and that's going to put a... Like last Fall, but right. This. That's going to clean it up and put a fresh coat of asphalt on it and new lines, and then we'll we'll be doing a little bit of landscaping there, and then from there uh, maintaining the landscaping and all that. So it will sort of perk that area up a little bit, and ha uh, essentially half of that lot will be um, for official park and ride. You know, by the DOT park and ride standards. That's the agreement that we have. So. I don't, I mean, you know, that's parking. I don't know what the deal is, really. Do you have to park and ride or can you park and walk? But then the rest of the lot is going to be available for parking. And, again, we subscribe to the shared parking model. Um, if, if it becomes a problem and, you know, for some reason it's jammed up, I don't know, with people camping in there or something, whatever, you know what I mean, then, that, then that's a problem, but... Um, but it will be available. I think yeah. another piece of that too is education to the public. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's cool. well, and there. What about so this the lot that's attached to Moi and Primal Fit? What's the plan for paving that? Because that would alleviate, I think, a lot of our building to have that more clearly labeled to be parking. Because still, people think that's construction zone, mm -hmm. um, and I think it would help a lot. And that has the most parking spots for our. Yeah. Well, uh, which one is that, Allie? The one that the one that the where one like the job trailer yeah. is oh. at, where um, 
eventually. Is that on this plan right here? Um, I have that may be an area. Well, it's the one where two and four like Main four Street. Four street. Oh, yes. Yeah. There and on the street. Right. And right and now there is. The alley next to us, which is my second question for you guys. I want to get to the bottom of this alley next to us. Where? And the other thing, the That's number right. of parking spots, I think, yeah. to Dennis's point, is people people know where they're going, and so they go and do their business and they get out, but um, they need to, I think, we, as a town, can do a better job just putting some signage up, too, or even in the businesses just about where that. parking spots are available mm -hmm. while construction's going on. Because to your point, um, we did have people, at, we had an event at Corner Point, and people did not park in that lot because there was no signage, no nothing, and they were like, they parked on the side of the road because they thought it was safer than parking in the parking lot because they didn't mm -hmm. want to get a ticket. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you should have parked in the parking lot. Right, um, if you put up a sign that says no parking, they'd be more likely to get parking because they know it's for parking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, they didn't know if mm -hmm. it was a private lot, whether it was a municipal lot, whether mm -hmm. anything. And so, you know, they just say, well, you know, side of the road, I might get, a, you know, a ticket or something, but if it's a private lot, are they going to have me towed? Mm -hmm. So, some signage up about, you know, yeah. where you can and can't park. I definitely agree that I think signage would be the easiest solution, that you can park around the corner, you know, right. ar ar around the corner in the edge there. You can park in this lot. Um, it, you know, e e even stuff, you know, on BC, uh, BCTV, BC TV, yeah. you know, just like letting people know where they can park, things on the website or newsletter or something. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Social just media. so people Social media. who... I mean, it's definitely not an answer, but no, it's no, no, but it, 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 it'll take a little bit of the pressure off. Even like the shopping plaza signs, like if we were to do like a classier one than just, you know, like the big like Kohl's or whatever, yeah. but you know, like where they have like a nice little like here, Bad Wolf, Primal Fit, whatever, park here. Mm -hmm. Park like that. Yeah, because yeah. there's only and the other thing too is to make sure you put on that. If I'm if I'm disabled, there's only five parking spots in downtown. Mm -hmm. So am I driving around looking for those if the lot is full? It's it's important to identify those, and maybe that is a question one right yeah. Town parking lot. Gotcha. Yeah. That's the two I was missing. Yeah, yeah. but there's yeah there's five in total. Yeah. So, but if I'm coming to visit, those are the only the only spots. I mean. Mm -hmm. You, I've said it before, I don't think that we have enough handicap parking in the downtown yep. area. I think I agree. a couple more spaces is definitely needed, but but they need to be identified and put out there so people know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, Blues Night at Corner Point. Where is the closest handicap spot for me to, to look? Does, does the five downtown include the two that's in our back lot? No, the back the back yeah. lot isn't isn't enumerated on this map. Okay, I I, I drew it in, so yeah. I knew where it was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. have how many spaces? Two. Two ADA. Yeah, yeah. Oh. two handicap. <laughs> yeah, I mean I know that lot. I know Alex isn't here, but I know that lot's private to the building. But uh, you know we we don't yeah. care. Okay. People can so park. Two more. Okay. Yep. But see, again, we didn't know that, so yeah. getting that out there. I mean, I knew it was there because I've been on that road, but that's about it. <laughs> Can you guys describe, like, what the situation is with the alley next to us? Is that town? Is that privately owned? Is it a right Are you of talking about the road between... Between Subway, Subway and, and Bad Wolf, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's, it's, what is it called, Matt? Back Street. Back Street, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's Back Street, and I think the parking is, uh, I think we... Let me make it for it was just for the tenants of those buildings because there's only like three parking spaces back there. There's like ten parking spaces there and five. Well, really, essentially well, all no, the not, not on the not in the the part that uh, the ones that are behind the building, I think, are the ones that we 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 addressed specifically because people were parking there to go to businesses or whatever, and those are like <coughs> the parking specifically for those. Like housing units, or but how did they end up being parking mm -hmm. specifically for those units? Because in my eyes, I mean, a, a landlord ship is an LLC. So why are we paying as a town to maintain parking spots for an individual LLC? That would be like me having three bad wolf spots outside on your public land and having you guys maintain the road and nobody else can park there. I don't recall it came up a couple of years ago. It's I can't remember my, what happened. My understanding, and Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a long, long standing understanding that those. 70 are, years, 75? <laughs> yeah, so it goes back 
double my age. To the 50s. To the 50s. And I think it's How many apartments? But like it's three yeah. spots, right? <laughs> no. It's only three spots yeah. specifically that are... are, are There's are, five. Oh, okay. There's but are, are you talking about the ones behind the building or the ones that are behind you that are in, in between you? the building? So in, they in come the down. I don't. The, the parking that's in between the building is that public, private? What is that? No, there's five tenant spots for the. There's, yeah, there's they a, park facing the building. Yeah, and, I, I, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I, yeah. But there's five spots, not three. Well, so there's five, and then realistically, like there's one spot. That is like on the curb. Like it's very like hard to tell if it's even a spot. Yeah. And whenever we have a customer that parks there, they get like verbally assaulted by those tenants on a regular basis. We've had those tenants come in swearing in our store, um, and I understand their frustration, but I don't understand why the town has put them in like this position, whether it's seventy-five years ago or not. Like it just doesn't make sense to me for it to be. But I don't know why we're like. People are paying to maintain someone's businesses. <laughs> Specific town lot, yeah. It's, it's, been, it, it, it's been going on for like 70 years since Ernie Norman had it years ago. Um, and when we owned it, um, for about 10 to 12 years, uh, there was always just three spots mm -hmm. because there's three one bedrooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. So it was always just three spots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then another individual bought it from us and uh, why it went to five, I don't know. I know. But it was always three. And it was always grandfathered through the town, through the selectmen. And that's all I can tell you, you know, from what my father-in-law told me. Um, you know, this guy knew this guy, this guy knew this guy. And, and all of a sudden, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that's just how, that's how it went. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah <laughs> I know, I know. That's how it went. That's the story behind it. That's the story and, behind yeah. it. If I recall, our ordinance was specifically just like, like that. That those spots, uh, the the three spots, I believe was specific was the ordinance or whatever was that that those are for the tenant parking there, and that um, that if you if you weren't a tenant and you parked there that you could possibly receive a ticket, but we don't really enforce that. Mm -hmm. I mean the town isn't doesn't have a parking meter made or anything like that. Um, so it, I mean it's it is an ordinance, but it's not. Enforced, yeah. so I mean, in either which way, tenants shouldn't be coming and attacking you or your customers for parking there. If they have a complaint, they should call the police. You know, that would be that'd be the logical course yeah. based on the ordinance. <laughs> and there but, isn't a number of spots that are enumerated. It just happens to be the space in between signs. So mm -hmm. we yeah. need to measure out what three spaces actually oh, yeah. would How be. How many apartments are actually there? Three. Right. three. So there's only there's three, only three spots right. there. So if you want to spend money on the signs, we can build three signs, like this one, tenant park, tenant park, and tenant park, and anything else is open. But. And if we do that, we should be putting them toward the back corner yeah, of correct. that, right. app, like that curve, because no, then you have the whole the... front, correct. and that would be easy parking mm -hmm. for every, like it literally benefits everybody at the yeah. table, right? And then, so, yep. I, I, I mean, the more I think about it, signs are the, are the simplest <laughs> option um, for a lot of <laughs> these issues. But um, I mean, I mean, not just for not just for the Wilson Street lot or going around in the edge, but also the town parking lots. Mm -hmm. So we have the town parking lot right in front of the town, the town hall. People don't know if that's employee parking, public parking. I mean, there's no, there's no determination there. You have the parking lots on the other side of town hall. There are spots that are enumerated for employees only, but, but in general, people don't know if the rest are for public parking or anything like that, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you have this ambiguity that I think doesn't lend itself to helping the situation at all. And then who maintains the parking lot when it snows? Who provides that lot? You were yeah. talking about the one between... I'm talking about... Back I tell you, it's full of yeah. potholes. You guys do? <laughs> the town. The town okay. So the them. town does, not the LLC. Correct. So we own the park. We own Back Street. Mm -hmm. we own, it, it is a town. It is a town. And what, so eventually, once we get the utilities underground there, that will be paved mm -hmm. and will be striped. Mm -hmm. So that will, I think, that'll help, help out. But I do agree. There's why. I mean, if it takes everything on the select board. If there's three apartments, compromise. You get three spots, but move them to the back. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's, you know, as opposed to right where everyone's parking for businesses. Yeah. Well, I agree mm -hmm. with it. You know, uh, I've had this conversation with James over the years before John and his crew came down. And uh, for years the town said, oh, we don't know. 
They denied that that was even a street. Okay, selectmen sat there and said, it is not a street. So I said, okay, so I get my lawyer. We do some research. She goes to York County, coming to find out that when we own the buildings down there, my building was 33 by 75. It would touch his brand new dumpster. The next building, the subway, was bigger than that because there was Ricker's Plumbing in the alley where the cars are parking was Ricker's Plumbing Shop. Prime Tanning took and put that L building behind us in, moved the road, and the road, when they put the fence behind Johnny Bell's hardware, the road they moved on the other side, and it was no longer a throughway for a little bit of a while. It was just an alley. So Prime Tanning moved the building when they built the L building. My deed says I own 75 feet. My lawyer says, put it in your draw, you'll never win. That's it. My did. So my deed, going back 150 years, said I own 75 feet. So Prime Tanning moved it. That's where Marsha Elton, some of the older people that were on the board, Sammy and them, uh, said, well, we don't, know, we don't think that's a street because it used to be an alley. But people did just make deliveries in the back. So there was a plumber shop. Devin Dukes was a store, a grocery store, the post office, and there was a bunch of different things. A lawyer upstairs, your building. Um, so they, they prime moved the whole, whole building. So now the town is saying it is Back Street. My handicapped cement thing is in Back Street. His tanks is in Back Street. Yeah. It's a mess. Leave it so, well, what, what, I, what I had talked about, what I had talked about <laughs> yeah. with Ben in the future, when it, and I say it shouldn't be your cost, but if we're going to do this, somehow figure out to get the tanks on the ground. I don't need that thing. Rip it out. Put the drainage in. You need. They did awesome drainage. That alley used to flood and come out, end up in front of Devin Dukes with silt this deep. Brad from Spencer Matthews was out there with a shovel, taking out this much silt. There was so much back up in the downtown. There's no more, no more runoff now. You see the size of the pipes they put? So if you're going to do it, do it right. And then once you get done, and once it's tied, and once you put your lines in, you'll be able to differentiate. Geez, I just picked up maybe four more spots. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we asked them to add the parking lot out back, which kind of like on the dead zone they had, a little bit of the town, a little bit of the dance, it picked up 11 spots. I have to be honest with you, I think as a group, and if we're going to go forward and meet on this, we need to go back to Brad and say, Brad, you got three spots on your side at Spencer Matthews, none of your people should be parking in that parking lot, up here, but the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And I can tell him that, he's a great guy, I mean, you know, we've had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's had that, we've had this conversation, his neighbors. Yeah. 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 No, That's what great. we need to do. We need to sit down so and sit down his neighbors and say, yeah. Yeah. when are you here? At five o'clock, we're gone. We're not even here on the weekends. I mean, so Spencer Matthews is gone. Yeah. I mean, so that opens up everything. That yeah. lot is huge, and I think there's a lot of education to the public that needs mm -hmm. to happen because I can tell you I'll pop out to take the trash out at 6.30 in the middle of our dinner rush, and downtown is completely packed, but that lot seems to be empty, and it's just like me and my partner's car. Which lot specifically? It's the right, lot that's done. kind of yeah. next to and slash behind Spencer Matthews. Okay. Yeah. Um, that being said, it is completely packed yeah. during the day. Yes, right. I've got to assume that it's packed yes, during during the day for Spencer Matthews employees, and I think probably some. I see a lot of people daycare, daycare, daycare. Mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. um, and that's fine. I mean, it is. That's where we could put some signage up. But yeah. but yeah, like if people knew, and I did, I pinned something to my our business Facebook page. Like so, if you go to the Facebook page, it's like pinned up at the top is like our menu, but also a parking map. And I like highlighted kind of like you did here, and I did include that space. Um, but I just don't think people realize. I think they think it's yeah. Benson Matthews, and they just assume they can't park there. Well, they don't mm -hmm. see it at all. Like it's really yeah. like is, kind is of it, awkward to see it. It's, all. it's, it's kind of a spot to be in. No. So it is town. It's on Back Street. Well, I get a okay. Street. And it, and it uh, goes so into yeah. Back Street. It leads you into Back Street. So that's another uh, thing yeah, is that alleyway <laughs> probably <laughs> should be a one way. And it works because it's got a couple of it's a daycare. Yeah. There's no, there's no signs. Let's put it that way. Well, yeah. 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 Speaking of that, yeah. 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 
So that's what my recommendation was, was uh, you yeah. know, the three yeah. assigned yeah. tenant parking spots yeah. on the back lot with the 11 months. spots. Right, right. Yeah. right. yeah. I mean, and then that's still not that far of a walk. I mean, no, get an apartment in Suco or Woodford, and mm-hmm. yeah. you're right. hiking. Yeah, you're lucky to get a spot. You could right. really tuck them right How next to like the dumpsters. How many spots are currently available? That we have do you think JCS, that wouldn't interfere with construction like in the middle? And they would be like dead center, like like right now. Every, yeah, every public spot would be closer. Boy, I don't, I, yeah. yeah. I, How many? What was? I'm sorry. How many, how many spots? So how many spots do you think available? you have currently available over there right now that wouldn't impede on construction? Because well, I, I, I mean, mean that's some of the fear too. Is people driving in, they don't want to. Right, right. Main street built. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't. I think it's only striped. Is it striped all the way? I, I mean, think only the staff right now is. That parts is that that's built but not striped. <laughs> right, built but not striped. <laughs> so in the the side. Oh yeah, I actually um, this weekend uh, yeah. I was looking at the new path for Aroma Joe's. But so the other I can thing that we right basically now. did at Devon Dukes. I can tell you right now. We because our clients come from everywhere. I mean, from yeah. Portsmouth yeah. Hospitals to Westbrook, yeah. 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 and when they're coming, we basically tell them, and all the girls do too. And Scott, and when I was there full time, okay, if you can't, there's no spot out front. There's nothing across the street. Pull behind the building, get out of your car, press here. the buzzer. We'll bring your order out. They call us and on the I phone. I'm coming in on the building. We we'll load up four or five boxes. They're gone. I want to say these are done. Yeah. We've done so that. So three, we've so educated. You know, don't even get out of your car. I'll wheel them down here. You know, so. It's, it's so all about work. Because yeah. 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 you don't want to Yeah, I think up to like yeah. here it's just striped by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Um, obviously. Yeah, there's more parking here. They're, 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 they're not. Yeah, but they're paid. Yeah. Um, which and is another good thing. Yeah, I, I think. Is this an older picture? Yeah. Because before that wasn't an option. Now it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I think that's how we agreed on too. Oh, you know, I guess that's just something you have to turn around. And that would leave all the ones in between the buildings, like Subway, Devon, Newport, all those on that. We have public not actually. Not counting the unpaid. No. Nothing else is there, but they're in business hours. This is it. No, we don't. We don't. And so, so like I was saying, with that with that back lot, like Alex and I have had conversations about posting that back lot as one Sullivan parking only, but we don't want to. Like it's not. You know, if it's a farmers market or an event, or if they're holding an event upstairs, like you know, there's not enough parking downtown. You know, unfortunately. You know, I don't know. There's probably some of the construction equipment here. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 What's that tally right there? When it's, it's right above. So that's 18. Done. So that's 18 right there. That's where the apartment is. 18. Let you know how many spots are going to be all around the perimeter on Wilson Street, School Street. And then that doesn't even include that right here. But if you look at these plans here, that's a pretty good segue to perimeter parking. Dennis, there's a So actually, what we're going to gain is safe. Yeah, if you look at the plan over here, we're looking at picking up approximately 19 spaces along Sullivan Street after the Eleanor. So from Ellen, the Eleanor main yep. intersection up mm-hmm. Sullivan, and then we're planning on doing it down Wilson Street as well. So I don't know how many spots that is, maybe 30. Is there any plan to put angled parking right here? You guys, you know, down Street. Rochester Street? We've loaded the idea, no. talked about no. public no. safety. They're not, okay, public no. safety is not no. thrilled about no. the idea of having parking and, and, on. And the lot right across yeah, the street. I think, too, I think Chief Town had an issue with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we, brought, yeah. we brought it up with him when he was here. What was the issue? If you don't, do you remember? The I don't, Jamie. I can't remember exactly what it was. Passing the like, 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 yeah, so yeah, there's like a kid just swinging the door open. Yeah, that's what he said. the street as they're coming down. But if they're angled, you wouldn't have any issues with... I don't think there's enough room angle. Yeah, if, if so we is that what it is? And we were looking at parallel mm-hmm. parking. Mm-hmm. No. You know, no. Sorry. Right. Hey. Stop. It might work. No, no, it's one way. So Already done. Only on the side yeah. of that. Yeah, because when we have the farmer's two. market, you see those cars like parked there. I know, they park there anyways. Yeah, so that, no, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that that is, you can fit three cars wide there, and sometimes they do. And then that because there wasn't enough room. Well, yeah, no, that's yeah. not yeah. yeah. because obviously we don't want to direct people there where it's going to interfere with what's like still a, a being done. We don't so want to put people in the way or wider, I think for there, you know events like, right. or like but, uh, a car show, we talk uh, about also, this year it's okay like to use that. that you know? We're getting to that point. 
because they can't turn it. It's awesome, though, because it tastes like I said, the first time I went through it was actually today. I'm pretty sure it's even actually a lot more finished in here than I thought, but that's... And I think that's kind of the... Back general consensus of anybody in town is, oh, there's still construction, you can't go there yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and because the Roma Joe's yeah. will pull away. Right. There's a reason why I had to switch to real. It's because when you did the angle yeah, market, yeah, yeah, good, so. the vehicles were out, and there wasn't enough space between the angle back end of the car that was angled in and across the street because it had to be so many feet. Yeah. And they said, you don't have, a, you don't have enough space for angle parking. But then, it, so it moved to parallel parking, and then the whole issue of, okay, well, now you're going to have to create a lip and when you do that that little lip, then the plows aren't going to. But I don't. I mean, I could see the plows going around a second time. They could make it, but. Well, I mean, that was that was not the deciding factor. No, <laughs> no. I'm saying that was part of the conversation. Yeah, it, was, it on, definitely was part of the conversation. Yeah, I just I think that's some prime real estate for even if it's four spots or five spots. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I feel. And like, I mean, look right, at look right. at downtown South Berwick. Yeah, I know. You want to talk about opening yeah. a door and losing your door? Door, yeah. yeah. Like, they've got parallel parking on both sides and, you know. And we've done it. You can't that's, get in. That's what I mean. The farmer's market, oh, just, the lawn chairs, yeah. they're always parked there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not that we haven't seen it before and it hasn't worked before. Yeah. My feeling is, uh, like, what, what, wait, when is the, this part of the Sullivan Street Wilson stuff, what, what is that projected to be? Done or on the schedule next year, probably. Oh, well, maybe starting a little bit this year, but probably finished. It would be optimistically, it would be next next year as long as things what part come is together. That? The, 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 the space is on Sullivan Street that. and then Wilson Could Street, the outer, the, the, outer edge, edge. the outer edge, the outer edge of the edge. So, that one. so this part, no, no, the, the color, the color. Oh, this, okay, yeah. So yeah, the, the oh, I feel like we have uh, there's definitely a a parking shortage, but I feel like it's manageable if we are communicating with the public better about where they can park. Because I definitely I have felt the ambiguity of where you can park mm -hmm. and when is it okay, mm -hmm. and you know nobody wants to get towed. It's the most inconvenient thing in the world. I've been towed for parking in the wrong place before, and it ruined my day. It is bad. Yeah. Right. Now, so, does the, you said there's a couple spots that are um, designated for employees for the town. Do those at least have hours on them? They do. They do. Okay. They have. Uh, they, well, yeah, we updated yeah, those. Uh, it's not like a week ago. Signs are in the lot. They they say. But they, they are updated. Fair enough. But but to me, I still feel like there's ambiguity about whether you can still park there. You right. know what I mean? You know, it's because like, there's, there's more spots than there is employees. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's like, there's ten the spots way. out of thirty that are designated. You know, but people don't know that it's public parking and anybody else can park there too and go pick up their pizza or whatever. You know. Uh, okay. So I feel like I feel like communication would solve seventy five percent of this issue now, mm -hmm. and I feel like most of it, most of the rest of it, could be solved with. Communication with the owners and making sure that people, you know, Domino's is parking their stuff around the corner and out back and not, you know, delivered in the middle of the street. Or, and that once the edge is actually complete, it, you know, we'll have a lot more people going there, but we'll also have a lot more parking. It won't look as crowded as it really is. Because mm -hmm. uh, to your point, like, yeah, when it looks crowded, nobody wants to stop and park and be a, and add to the mess. When you're driving through downtown Dover at 4 p.m. and every spot is full, nobody wants to stop and wait for pizza or whatever because you're going to have to park three blocks away. Yeah, I, I, I really I do agree with that. So I feel like we can solve a lot of this with signage, with communication, with you know making sure people know what's available because there is parking there. It's just that people don't know where they can park, and that includes us up here. We don't know where we're right. And, uh, but I also think we could, we should look at, uh, you know, like you said, maybe we could. We've had this long-standing seventy-five-year tradition of yeah. giving up three spots that now have suddenly turned into five. Go back to three spots mm -hmm. and move them to a less, That's, you know, area you know, I, I, because I totally agree. because we can. I mean, we own the lots on the yeah, road. We can do that. that. And by also doing that, I think that will open up to where then communication to say to these these vendors, if you're making a delivery, yeah. please make it in here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, 
they don't need to park directly in front of the building to offload. They could park over there to offload. And I think and I think, it's really I think that should out. also be the message that you don't have to park right in front of the building to patronize the building. Right. <laughs> you don't have to walk four feet, and if it's more than that, you just give up. You know. Right. You don't have to if you're not parked right in front of Bad Wolf. You can park, you know, a block away, and you'd still be, you yeah. know, easy I, walking distance. But I think sign is like you said on on your lot. People just they just think it's a private lot, so they're not really sure. They're confused. Um, same thing with downtown or in in the businesses too. Sort of partner up and say, put something on the the corner point website. Hey, if you're coming to an event, here are some parking options. Have something in there, you know, on your thing. I like the fact that you have it right on your website where the menu is. Coming in, stopping in. Here's some time. Um, especially designating you know where are the handicapped spots because if you drive around you're not going to know there's two behind you there's not going to I mean if you're not familiar you're having an event there and you're inviting people the only one they're going to see is that one that's directly in front of the town hall which is most likely taken hey where do I look for the others so maybe we could put something up too in front of the town hall where that sign is some sort of tripe we could look into that where it literally said, I think somebody mentioned it, is here. Here's, here's where all the businesses are located because a lot of new things are coming into yeah. the edge. And some people are like, well, what's coming? What's it? Mm -hmm. Take a walk around town. Take a look. Here's the signage. Here's where you want to go. Um, and check some stuff out. Mm -hmm. Is anyone on the Vision Berwick committee here? Because I know they just came out with the business directory, and that would be another good, if you pair that business directory. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. Jeremy. The parking. Yeah. 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 Jeremy. <laughs> That's a good idea. I was just going to ask them to put something on BCM anyways that there's parking yeah. well, there's, right now, there's too. That just too, to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having, this parking, we're having this parking discussion <laughs> about the educating the public and things like that. Yep. And so is it possible for Envision Burke, you just put out the business directory? Yep. Is it possible to add where all the parking spots are in downtown, where the handicapped spots are, which ones are timed, so that anyone coming to visit any one of these businesses can see from that directory, hey, this is where the parking available is. Is it possible to pair it up? Sure. So the directory lives on the website at the moment, okay. right? So we would add a page to the directory with a sort of a map that's... Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're looking for, yeah. yeah. The creation of that map as an interactive map, is that something that we would do in Google Maps, James? Or Because you want it to be able to show, like if I park here at this time, that, that spot is no longer available. Right? No, no, not no, no, just, no. Just, just, just where parking just is. Just show where the parking so it doesn't have to change based no. on. No. no, it's just here's. And could we, and possibly could BCM do something if we put something together? Hundred percent. No. Thank you. Well, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. We can do a direct town <laughs> manager update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Right. Here's parking. Thank you, Jerry. Take us on a guided tour, a walking yeah. tour. Honestly, that's not, I know you're joking, but that's not a bad idea to actually put a visual cue out there of this is what's yeah, available. available, this is what's still active construction, avoid this, but yeah. to help direct. Because yeah. you're going to highlight all the businesses while you're walking around and then telling people where to park to, to come. I mean, I don't, this is a workshop. There, we are no way going to address all of the issues. This is going to be an ongoing conversation, yeah. but there are a few things we can do. We can add some maybe one, two more handicap bases, we can educate the public more. And I and I agree 100% with you is we should be ahead of the game, not behind it. So now would be the time, while we're doing construction, to see what else is, you know, and look at, you know, contact you planning <laughs> and see about uh, that that parking. Is, should we put that in now? Is it something that we at least put in the plan, and I don't mean like, now 2024, but is it something that we put in the next five or ten years, and how do we go about doing that? Because you start putting all these businesses and you and all these apartments, you're inviting people to come to Berwick, which we want. They gotta have a place to park. I know the owner of the lot that abutting the back of the town lot. So if you're looking at like the back half of the town hall parking lot, yep. through the woods, yep. there's like mm -hmm. a you could double the size of the parking lot or do potentially like a parking. Behind like the boxing place? Is yep, it's yeah. behind the boxing place um, for a potential garage also. I don't know if the town buys that, but... Well, we have funds for for spaces and stuff like yeah. that. To 
if there's grants like yeah. Yeah, we're talking but about. Maybe if this, if you got a grant for a this, for especially a if he's tying it in with the DOT or the uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Park and ride. Park and ride. Park and ride. I mean. Sounds I like, didn't want to. Sounds like a job for for what, what is the what's the position? <laughs> the director of community. And, yeah, there you go. Yes. Sounds like a job. For I, I didn't want to fringe on John and his group about that spot, but it, it it just makes sense because they're going to put in all these units and and you know all these businesses and everything, and it just makes sense that hopefully that they can work with us because the parking ride. Makes sense, mm -hmm. uh, and you can expand off of that with another layer of garage. And if you've got 120 on this map now, and there's another 120 up there, it, it's just we shouldn't be waiting 75 years like right. Right. Douglas Hospital in downtown Dover. I mean, right. you know, if you don't have to, and if the if the infrastructure money is there, it's it's pulling all the powers to be to be able to do this. Now, John did say that. You know, it could be something that they might want to develop in the future. But I guess it's just being able to say, can we work with John and Great Falls and figure this out and say, does it really benefit as developing it or does it benefit the town 100 years from now when we're all gone and we had some vision. To this. <laughs> <laughs> and we had some vision to be able to say, hey, they, they, they thought about it and we're not doing it in the year 2124. Then we have no, flying cars. Uh, no, I don't mean you stepping on your toe. Yeah, no, I'm just stepping on your toe. I'm no, I'm just, this is a workshop. Um, Let's talk about ideas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yes. Do, yes. Is there a timeline on the sidewalk that's basically someone would probably take from that lot that kind of takes that curve? Because yeah. I live right up off of Sullivan, and I have to cross the street four times yeah. from walk to walk, and there's part of it that I don't even have sidewalk. Um, to, and there's and they're not in the best condition. So I can tell you right now, if I was not the business owner that I now am, I would very. I never went to Zapai. Like I lived right in town the entire time of their existence, and I never bothered because of the parking. And like I'm like it's not really a safe walk for me. So we're in Sullivan Street. Do, do I live? I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. No, <laughs> Um, from actually, the park and ride down past like the Great so, Wall, so, so that, that plan has sidewalk from both sides. Yes, I'm just more talking like I'm, I've got to assume that's happening because of all what we're doing. But like the timeline, like that right there. I don't want that. Yeah, a little right. further out. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Building. Uh, probably the realistically building. next yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Never. Well, next Nothing year. I, hopefully, I mean, we haven't looked at it. Yeah. I, we have. Well, I know you got. We have funding for it, but it's just a matter of yeah. That's. We did like further up junk, before <laughs> down. Yeah, I know. What, I think, uh, if you could, what was the reasoning? <laughs> that, because yeah. that required more yeah. design. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. you've got the little one across the street. Because the that's sidewalk the right outside this your building, is that's is been redone, right? Like right. that's, that's nice. That's now, a nice point. Right? And then yeah. up near, yeah. going yeah. up yeah. towards the ballpark, that got redone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the other side where you cross over right at that corner because mm -hmm. there's no sidewalk on one side. You have to cross, but then that's where it's like basically yeah. just pavement. Yeah. If you're really in a wheelchair or have a stroller, yeah. you're not no, going I, on that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the runoff of the road that you're walking right. through, yes. Right. And it's true. <laughs> and and walked it up the, my kids. The, park, the, the sidewalks have been a long discussion mm -hmm. going back five or six years or more as well. Uh, I remember James gave the whole presentation years mm -hmm. ago about sidewalks. about like these are the classes of sidewalks we can get. We can get the class A gold tier sidewalks that you know, or we can go down to class C, which is basically just we put tar over it, you know, and just you know, and it's 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 something that we definitely want to do, but it's one of those things where it's it's hugely it's way it's way more expensive than you think it would be for yeah. something as simple as a sidewalk. Yeah, you know, it's a huge construction. You know, when you're doing like the when you're doing the when you do real sidewalks, they put them in giant pieces of, 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 of you know, granite, rock yeah. and the concrete. It's it's a huge project that costs a fortune. Yeah. And I think we I think it was something like four million dollars to oh redo goodness. like all the sidewalks the way we wanted to do them. Yeah. And uh, we ain't got that money. <laughs> the reason I bring it up is obviously like company. like you guys said, some people right off the bat, like we're we're in a society nowadays where everything's at our fingertips and so the the willingness to like park a little farther to walk somewhere yeah. is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
if we're trying to combat this feeling, it's, well, first, like, okay, if I have to park far away, that's fine. But the walk from point from my car to that next point has got to be reasonable enough, safe enough, you know, yeah. pleasant enough mm-hmm. for me to then do that with takeout bags in my hand and probably wrangling a couple kids at the same time. Yep. Because yeah. we're a family restaurant. So if if we lose out on that, like, I, I imagine a lot of people with kids probably don't come to us because, you know what I mean? I'm just yeah. thinking, like, no, how I, I, I would I, think I, as I a parent. Yep. So, yeah, that's all. But, yeah, I th- Somebody else brought up, kind of parking related but kind of not, is that in Berwick, it doesn't say on here, do we have any bike, you know, racks so that if we encourage people to park on the outside and come into an event or even employees that might feel comfortable if I'm on a bike as opposed to walking... Um, is that something that we can look into as yeah, well? Maybe dropping a couple racks around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah just around like town, mm-hmm. so that people can park their bike and walk it, and then bike rack to the town. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 they're like two hundred, two hundred fifty. I'll take it back. They're not that expensive, but you know, trash cans. I know we trash cans are expensive. Everything's expensive. But eventually, when this is all built, we're gonna we're gonna want to encourage. You know, mm-hmm. bikers, but especially to employees, things of that nature. We got to well, think mean, outside the box a little bit. We should want to encourage bikers anyway, because I right. believe in our master plan, our comprehensive plan, it is said that we're supposed to encourage mm-hmm. green initiatives and things like that, and yeah. that would be a good initiative. Uh, I do have one more question about the Wilson Street lot. Something that bothers me about the lot is, I mean, it's great, it's a lot of space, but also there's, like, there's two big you know, mounds of dirt and, you know, unlandscaped tree, you know, bush or whatever. And I just, it, it, I, you know, I don't know what the, what your plan is or what the idea is, but if you, you know, when you do redo it, I would suggest make it bigger. Like, if it's, if it's allowed, if it's possible, I don't know what you have to do to, if, to possibly do that, but it feels like you could add 30 spaces just by taking out a couple you know, a few a few dozen feet of that, you know, unused space and paving over that. If you're going to repave the whole thing anyway, yeah. that might be something that is possible as well. Yeah. I don't I don't know what the possibility is. But. Yeah, I think we would, um, we hadn't really looked too much at expanding it. I think that would be a, you know, a, a civil engineering and planning board exercise and all that. Yeah. Um, I do know that um, I... I mean, when you talk about the signage and stuff required there, once the DOT law mm-hmm. is in place, yeah. there will be signage. That's part of the equation, yeah. and the landscaping will be cleaned up. So I think that'll help a lot. I don't know. I can't recall what the signage is going to say. We talked about it when we were talking with the DOT. There may be more required at that point. We can see, but I think... Well, um, here's a good question for you. If the town bought signage mm. that was just like, public parking here or whatever, you know, um, could we put that up? Would you, would you like? Yeah, I think, well, so I think it's um, it's going to be able to be used for parking. I think the, the danger, I guess we just want to be sensitive to, I mean, at some point, you know, the businesses that are at the edge, I mean, the, the residents, we can, um, you know, we can direct them where to park, and the idea is that we would direct them to that lot and the lots on site, you know, we've got the lots on site in there, but that, I mean, combined, it's 300 and, I don't know, it's under 400 spots combined, you know, so. But, um, the, in the, but we're talking about the next year or two. Right, that right. They're not going to be right. done in that Exactly, time. exactly. And that's the time that, you know, mm-hmm. you know, speaking from experience and, you know, new businesses, if they're going to fail, they're going to fail usually early on, you know, and we don't want that to happen. Right. Anybody's new businesses, we want them to thrive now. Right. <laughs> no, it's just it, like I, like the, the, the pizza place. Like that was a, I want a pizza place in town, you know, and that didn't last, I mean, very long at all, frankly. And it, it, they, they had a quality product, from what I, you know, understand from most people was very happy with it. They just, you know, I want... I want to see the businesses be able to thrive, mm-hmm. and I don't want lack of parking while construction is going on to be part of the equation. 
Correct. You know what I mean? That, I don't, I don't want the business owners coming in early being penalized for being exactly. in there early. You know, yeah. you know yeah. that's... Yeah. That, that's <laughs> yeah, 100% right. right. You know. So, I mean, I'm not talking about permanently, but right. it, I mean, in the meantime, while you, right. everything is getting built and, you know, things are, you know, in the works, is that something that, that, that could work? Yeah, I think it can. I mean, I I can't remember what we do. You remember what we talked about, James? On that, I mean, we talked a lot about that lot, and I, I know Julie would remember it quite well, but I don't know what we've got for signage, what the plan is. Um, but in on all, you know, our concept is is shared parking, right? Yeah. So, you know, under that pretense, there will be people that park on the edge or in our lots that are doing that are not going to the edge or going to our things. That's just kind of how it works. It's it's uh, I'm, I'm a little guarded in a sense just because we've we do have a duty to our tenants to make sure that you know we're not just you know it's not all rainbows and butterflies here and anybody and everyone can can take it but I think the reality is in the in the interim when there aren't things built there um, that like Michael asked the question how many parking spots right now and there are not counting the the gravel lot. But that you were speaking about, Ali, just counting like the the spots on Main Street and the spots in the drive-through loop going to the Aroma Joe's. There's 92, I believe it is, right? Mm -hmm. So there's 92 spots right now that are paved, not being used again because people do feel as though it's a construction site, and they're being used slightly because we have some tenants that are in Eight Main Street, uh, but Aroma Joe's just opened up a few days ago, so more people are going to be rolling through there. We are wrapping up that building, and we're going to be sort of our plan is to move to the other side of the site at 16 and 18 Sullivan, and hopefully get we'll have some grass going and areas there, just kind of clean that area up and let it just let it sit for a bit, you know, before we're back building over on that on that side of the site. So I think that'll all help sort of bringing people through there. Um, and during events, I know that James we would had asked us about the car show. And, like, we do think this is the year that it finally can start to go up Main Street, you know. And um, and so I think all of these things will start to show people. And, they, you know, I'm, I'm reluctant. Those 92 spots are there. If there's events going on or a few people park there, it's, it's not an issue. You know, if all of a sudden it's jammed up and we can't, you know, we can't work there, we can't do anything. But I don't see how that's really going to happen. No, yeah. no, correct. We would, just, we would and, deal and with that at the time. Yeah, and, and yeah. signage can be temporary, and, and, it, and it can move, and it can move on yeah. whatever you guys yeah. have going on too. Because the last thing yeah. we want to do is impede on any of the construction or any of the work that's being yeah. there too. Yeah. And that's but why people I don't think it's park just that. there because they don't want to get in the way. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. they're not afraid you're going to crush their car with a bulldozer. They're afraid they're going to get in the way and right. and right. ruin your day. Right. So right. Yeah. maybe yeah. like if we could send out a memo to the tenants at the edge right now, encouraging like employee parking to be behind, like where the daycare, like the paved spots behind the daycare. The 11 spots like next to the dumpster you're talking about? No. Like or I'm, over on the Aroma Joe's side? Yes, but not like the Aroma Joe's spots and not the ones mm -hmm. next so, to the next yeah. ones, like where the glass, yeah. facing the glass doors of the daycare. I think that... Definitely getting together as as uh, people at the edge to talk about where employees should park is a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't we de why don't we decide that offline? Is yeah. because I think we should yeah. everyone yeah. should weigh in on it. Like I'd where say is employees a good and idea. even deliveries too. Yeah. You know, if you guys have a designated spot and you're taking it off the road and putting it yeah. back, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's Does good. anybody That's have good. anything else they want to add before we adjourn? Just sure. one, hopefully, quick thing. Okay. <laughs> hopefully. Um, the lots that are all designated to our parking, and I know I complained a lot when the other signs went up a couple years ago, um, which, ironically, it says no limit observed right there. <laughs> all these other lots and all these other spaces say to our parking. There's no signage now, right? I don't think there is. So, sure. Yeah, the only <laughs> signage is right up this here, is right? inside. Yeah, yeah, that inventory is from 2019, I think. So if there's going to be signage done, is the two-hour parking thing going to be enforced? Um, is it going to be on the signs? I, I don't. We, that will be a discussion, and we'll have to figure that out. Again, the in, in terms of the parking, <laughs> it, we it, the general rule with our ordinance in terms of parking is it's 
meant to be suggestive to help people, you know, actually conduct business. Right. In terms of enforcement, we don't have a parking division. We don't have a meter made. There's nobody going up, making marks on tires and leaving tickets and things like that. Right. You know, it's more of a, as a as a guideline so that people aren't monopolizing. Yes. Spaces. We don't want people there po parking overnight. We don't want people parking oh, yeah, in a two-hour sure. spot and being like, "Oh, I work here, so I'm going to park here for eight to twelve hours Correct. and take up a spot that a customer would take." You know, right. that's the real purpose of that type of ordinance. But the reality is, you know, the police have real crimes to deal with. So. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And <laughs> they, I'm, and I'm, the I'm not the streets of Berlin. Yeah, <laughs> I only bring it up because it, it, it most likely would impact me the most. Yeah. Um, but it would impact. Then as well, if he's doing a six-hour tattoo, yeah, yeah. Um, or once you start serving alcohol, yeah, <laughs> people are going to hang. Yeah, yeah. but it's when it's but, you know, like in like like we we are with our with the space that we have now, we're really starting to do a lot more private parties and functions. And then, yeah. I mean, I'm sure a bunch of you have been to the blues jam that we do, yep. which yeah. is three hours, and we have bands that are three hours. Yeah, um, and just hanging the two-hour signs across the street when that happened with Zapai was there. Yep. But Jamie, I don't know. I mean, because right now it's the two hours that it's it's eight to six, and I don't know even if it's we go back to it and say it's nine to five Monday through Friday. How much of that, well, you know, helped. and doing that, how much of that impede? That would you know, because if we just did it in that little Monday through Friday nine to five, because then that shouldn't impede you on the weekends or. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Ben. It might still it might still be you. You know where that's. But I mean, would that be easier? Or would that be something well, well, that's better? Well, so the sign. Because right now it's two hour parking, but it says yeah, eight 90, to six. Ninety five percent of the time, eight it's not going to impact any of us. Right. Yeah. Most people aren't going to hang for yeah. four hours. Right? No, no. If they do. They're going to need Uber or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but in the case where you guys have events upstairs, or we're doing events, or or whatever, um, I know. From experience, when they posted across the street, we got flooded with people that were kind of what Dennis was saying. They came, and they were like, "Ah, this lot's full, and that lot's full, and all that's over there is two-hour parking." So we just decided not to come. Um, okay. So, like I said, ninety-five percent of the time, it's not going to impact any of us. Yeah. But there's going to come times where it does. Um, so if it's never been posted, yeah. I mean, I'll throw the recommendation out there that we don't post it. I mean, we put signage up, but. You know, I agree with the employees shouldn't be parking there. Um, and I, same with Dennis said earlier. Yeah, yeah. My mom, my wife, <laughs> a couple other people got lazy and they started parking in the closest ones to our front door. Um, you know, and everyone has to park out back. So, um, yeah. so would you, like, so what was your suggestion? Like, it says Monday thank through Friday. Go, go nine to five Monday through Friday. Because I would think that's the only time that, thank you guys, you know. That two hour you know, it's, is, is I think more so that recommendation was town hall business, so they're away. And, you know, like yeah, James said, right. it's an antiquated model, and we didn't have a bunch of different businesses downtown when we came up with oh, this. Oh, so yeah, maybe yeah. it's, you know. So you prefer it, it, it just say. Or, or, or James is just saying, don't throw it at all. But say, you know. That's, I mean, that's I mean, fine. I mean, yeah. you know. So, like, so I'm not like for against rush, one way or the other either. You know, I, rush or whatever. I mean, I don't know what you're. I'm not speaking for you. I don't know what your tattoo schedule is or whatnot. <laughs> like, you know, I'm sure you don't want to do a six hour tattoo starting at my, seven o'clock at night. My clients never have an issue with it. You know, it's like not enforced. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. If it's yeah. ever yeah. enforced, then it might be a problem. I think the yeah. signage should mm -hmm. just say at this point until we get I mean, everything else done, just just what is public parking and what yeah. is yeah. Yeah. parking. And, and just leave it. Be the issue. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I'm not for, again, I mean, I'm not. Or against putting the time limit on there, I was just right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, frankly, again, the time limit was meant to, to help to help the businesses, you know, not be, you know, not not get uh, stuck with no parking at all because people actually move on. They know it's not permanent parking. You know, um, is there a plan, James, or, or, or is it us that we can do? Because I have two things on here for next steps: is the battery parking. Mm -hmm. How do we address that? Is that going to have to come before the board in order to move those spots over um, to? I can take a look at it and come back with a report to the board. Yeah. Um, just measure. I think just kind of right now the two signs or two arrows pointing at each other. And we just have to. I'll just measure what the distance. Right, is but between. irrelevant to that, can we move those? Yeah. Over so by just talking to the LLC and saying, mm -hmm. you know, these are our designated spots. Uh, if it takes another select board thing. We're not taking them away, or you're going to have three, but the three are going to be moved parking. over here because this is going to be 
parking for businesses in town. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and there'll be three spots. Um, so they're not losing the spots, we're just moving them. And yeah. I don't know what that takes, if you could look that up. And then how do we get, um, how do we designate, do we need a vote to designate additional handicap spots? Well, it takes more than a vote because we actually have to. It's got to be it's got to be repainted. Right. Well, yeah, I know, but I mean to assign it as that. Are the buildings handicap accessible? Mine is, yeah. We have three different handicap. I think all the new ones points, are. But I don't have any spot except for the one in front of the town hall. Like that right. one, and you would mm -hmm. have to like go pretty far to get. You'd have to cross the street. You have to go cross in and across. Street, yeah. What cross about the, the others? Place. I'm just asking. I mean, the other one is on the town alley side, and that would be like for our service corridor, which really they, you can't even get into our store from that way, um, on either side, and then like the unpaved parking lot, and I don't think there's any assigned spots in the unpaved parking lot right now. I was going to say I don't think you have anything that's ADA compliant if it's unpaved. Exactly. I don't think that's going to yeah, lie. It's, so. it's it's not, and right. I know the sidewalks too because. My daughter is disabled, and we came here. We parked right in front of Devin Dukes mm -hmm. to go to Untrucked on the wrong day that it was closed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. We did make it all the way to the third floor, and the very nice gentleman said, yeah, today's Tuesday. Um, yeah. That's, but that's we're getting more signs. She had difficulty, <laughs> difficulty for inside. getting oh, okay. up, up on the sidewalk, and then it's angled, the way it's angled, and then getting into the building. She had trouble that once she got in, there was a hel an elevator, so yep. she was able to get upstairs. But um, when that was closed, we said, "Okay, let's walk down to Subway." And the the, pave, the sidewalk mm -hmm. is yeah really uneven. And I just I never so you needed it, didn't give it much thought. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I asked because I'm like, if we're putting the spots in, we got to make sure we can get into the buildings too. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I'm sure that uh, I don't know if it takes a vote. It probably does because it would cost money to do it. But um, we can we can look into seeing about adding handicap somewhere. And James, can you get us quotes on bike racks and and um, you know maybe some sort of signage? Sure. Which like a, a those, those tripod things, you know, like trying to triangle that you see in downtown areas that maybe we could put centrally located so that people could see. Hey, because it also helps to highlight the businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard, yeah. I saw on the business thing that this was downtown. Where is it? You know, mm -hmm. it's down past here. By tripod, do you mean like way signage. wayfinding signs? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a big, yes. you know, it's like this, and you go, like you said, the you mall. You're here. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. here. And then have a map of all the oh, parking. Like a, yeah. And then the little arrows with like all the businesses. Like yes, kiosk. kiosk. Yeah, That's kiosk. the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Yeah. And on as far as signage, one thing that might help, what you started with the deliveries, yeah. Um, yeah. access yeah. access is a nightmare down here. So that's yeah. there's a lot of truck drivers that you don't want going down small alleyways yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They'll take out buildings. Um, In line. If I think we're talking about yeah, be yeah, no if, yeah. If we're talking about signage, one thing <laughs> one thing to put up, you can put it in front of my building, put it over here, is just something that says deliveries. You know, fifteen minute time limit. Or whatever. Yeah, huh. So if you've got a truck, and I know we're talking about Domino's, like if you've got a Domino's truck pulling up and he's sitting out there for two hours. Two and a half. Come on. <laughs> like, full I mean, I get I get three or four deliveries a, a month from eighteen wheelers, and they they pull up right in front of the building. I offload them with a fork truck, and they drive off. Like yeah. they're not. I think the longest one's ever been here is 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Normally it's five. Yeah. You know. So if it's if there's a time limit for deliveries, that'll yeah, our dramatically help. Yeah, delivery is literally fifteen minutes. Yeah, they run exactly. it out. Yeah, I yeah. can't imagine. Yeah, I don't want to be different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's to help you guys' businesses and. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I really can't imagine another. I think that would require not. an ordinance, but we can do that. Yeah. yeah, just something to look into. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's some, no it, 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 it makes perfect sense. Yeah, we have some research to do. Yep. Um, and again, these are things we didn't need until you guys started actually investing in the town. So thank you. Because yeah. now, yeah. now as things are developing, these are. Oh, this is and going. with that, you might want to include if we are going for more green initiatives. If it is going to be sitting there for two hours, it needs to be off. Shut off we the can't engine. Have idling. That's yeah. That's a good point. Is the truck on? Yes, it is. I'm still a big. I'm still a fan. <laughs> I know. He's I would have climbed. I would have climbed in the truck and shut off. Although we're asking a lot to ask him yeah, for it, no, no, but no. I still like. It's, if it's a refrigerated truck, wouldn't it have to run? I don't. I don't. You know, and I think Linda. You know, it, it's like. Granted, they're going to put fifty-five million in there and tabulate the square footage, and over twenty-five years, they're going to get back 
850 million on my numbers, which is great. Yeah, good for them. In 30 years, 40 years, it's going to be a billion. Mm -hmm. Kudos to them. That's exciting. Yeah. They came here, they're going to do that. Yeah. We shouldn't feel bad about asking something mm -mm. that basically, if that lot has got now 15 buildings on it 10 years from now, where's our parking garage? Right. Now, all I'm saying is, when you look at it, and I said it before, with, with Wentworth Hospital, downtown Dover, all these years, and I don't think it's much to ask, because in the end, they're going to make money on it anyway. they got the parking ride, so I don't know if they're getting compensated for that yeah. or not. No, I'm sure, I'm sure they could end up put a parking that. garage in, and you pay a dollar for the day. Right. So, you know, tabulate 120 times, you know, 365. I mean, there's opportunities. And, and there's other opportunities But as well. we need we, some help. Right, exactly. Partnering with them, because I also see, we keep talking about the edge. But I think even when the edge is done, the plan is it's going to expand even further. Look at, look at Memorial, look at Memorial Field. Field. We have a dirt parking lot there, and yeah. we try and find a spot when they're having a game. Mm -hmm. So if you had a parking garage, that's not far of a walk to walk up there to watch the game. Because mm -hmm. yeah. right now drive. they're all over the place. They're when parking on my front lawn. Corner? We've had people park at Cumberland Farms to go to the Blues Jam. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yep. I hope I don't get towed. I'm like, well, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, people. You know, mm -hmm. like you were saying, there's a lot of people that that won't. But if there's there's if you've got a draw for something, yeah. Yep. People will know it as long as it's not hailing and snowing and whatever. Yeah. People are willing to walk. Yeah. If you make it pedestrian friendly from the parking to wherever yeah. the businesses are, and you provide the parking. Yeah, that's why I also did some uh, bicycle things. No, that's okay. it. You have a couple bike racks. You have people who are willing to bike. Well, they know and it. Just and based on what Jamie just said. Look at the KSC Hall. Look at the metal building. Yep. Yeah. That could be four stories high with a non 175 not units. Ordinance. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That that could be four stories high with another 175 units. Yeah. The that could be a 100 to yeah. 200 seat restaurant, right. a metal building. Yeah. So now that yeah. whole topic of the parking garage might be full on a Friday night. <gasps> that's yeah, because I <laughs> I think that's going to end up happening even down <laughs> school going down past Cumberland Farms. I thought about mm -hmm. there are people looking there as well for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I think because that more than just the edge like over time, it, the edge is going to attract more business. Correct. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Correct. We need to and I'm hoping we do it right. Yeah, share yeah. of business. I have already yeah. people leave the trash Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, they will. Any other comments? Any other questions, concerns? Unrelated to parking, but kind of with signage, are, are there any wrong way signs? On Sullivan Street, because there's I know. no that would take a <laughs> tattooing that someone's not going up. I know. Yeah. There, is, there is a yeah. wrong way sign up here. Up there. But, yeah. I think there needs so to be something. That would take away a lot Even of Even at the island or yeah. something. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. like, I've there's seen a disconnect. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen them come out of the parking lot in front of, across the street and go right, and uh, it's like, and then the light turns uh, green. Yesterday, a yesterday, a guy in a red pickup <laughs> truck came across the bridge and went all the way up Rochester Street. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, people I mean, people in the tap room were just standing there watching him like, is he going to die or is he going to make it? <laughs> Someone's going to get a real interesting no tattoo coming. from Ben while he's watching. Yeah, right? Yeah, all the way up. They made it all the way up. That's so good. Yeah, maybe. Definitely. Let's yeah, we need a wrong way to sign. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. I know it's how you got to Thank you. This is really important. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get to work on this. We'll be back in less than six to eight months. <laughs> 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 Fiscal year 26. <laughs> By the time the age is done, we'll get the signs out. Well, the bike rack. Yeah, the bike rack. Yeah. So, Jane. Open the ground. We can solve it. We better start with the bike rack. Thank you, thank you guys very much. Thank you guys, great ideas. Thank you. Oh my God, what a good idea. Thank you. Businesses aren't taking the tenant spots. Perfect. But this is where it's going to be. Yeah, they'll yeah. say. Uh, you need to look at the signage for mm -hmm. the one announcing ones. public parking, pointing out where it is, delivery. Yeah, I think a lot of people just don't know there is that much public. Training. I didn't realize there was 92 no spots that were already done. Uh, I was like, maybe there's like 20 in there. Let's wait for them to like 45 or 50. Correct. You know what I mean? Um, the bike racks. 
Bike racks are an uh, easy fix. Wrong way yeah, signs. They're not that expensive. And two hundred bucks for yeah, decent I wouldn't, ones. Like if there is such a grant for parking yeah. garages, and that can easily. I know there's some public private. Yeah. Partnership. If there, if there is such a thing, I mean, I wouldn't mind turning the town parking lot or expanding it into a parking garage. Maybe making money maker for the town. We can't go you know four stories, mean? but we can go two. Yeah, I mean, it, it right. doesn't have to be anything. So it's like Atlanta, you can use ordinances. It's not allow us to go four downtown. Room. But you know, it's twenty bucks two, to park that's, for that's an hour. Size of a house, nonsense, you're not you know, right. A buck yeah, an hour is enough to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Sure so, so yep. those are the highlights of what I have, and also we need to look at. I went up a garage with no, but didn't really technically have walls. Lisa, are you there? Yes. How are you? Yes. Okay, well, my camera light is on, but it's not giving me any picture. Well, you're, you're wearing a lovely on? shade of gray this evening. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. the cover um, on your camera? Can you see us? Yes, I can see you. All right. All right. Well. So, James, final budget meeting. Take us through it. What are we doing? Sure. We can start um, right with... Article 7, so that's tab 1. Okay. You didn't bring your budget book? No, I didn't take it last time. I left it for Patty. She didn't bring it back. I left mine. She was right there. There. So, final budget number is 667459 I don't believe we had any outstanding um, questions on this. This is the proposed budget, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So tonight we'll just um, confirm the numbers and then the official vote will be on Tuesday. That's next week, six days from now, we have another meeting. Six days. Six days. So general expense, that's workers' comp insurance, um, legal fees, the audit, our dispatch, fee lights. Overall, it's a $9,525 decrease or negative 1.4%. I did have one question. On legal fees, I noticed that it had gone down quite a bit. What, um, $25,000? We had a lot going on um, the past couple of years. It just isn't, it isn't as involved. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't really need it as much. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, we've worked our way through those. And yeah, I'll tie that to the water department, okay? <laughs> right, that, that was a lot of it, but also yeah. bringing on HR yep. um, hopefully will prevent us from needing um, the use of those kind of funds. You should say having trained HR. We always had HR, it just wasn't always... Trained HR, it was okay. just wasn't, It just always wasn't as effective or... Designated mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't designated, you're right. It just wasn't designated that way. Uh, street lights. The... Um, I have a question about the audit. So every year, there's a full audit of the town done, all budgets. We get a really big book at the end of the year, letting us know where all the money went. And I think there hasn't been a single year where there was money misplaced or wrong. Are we required to do an audit every year? Yes. I believe so, but Lisa could probably speak more intelligently yes. about it. Than yes, I we are. Yeah. Okay. Required. required by law. Okay. Why the huge jump this year? I mean, I'm not. I, I think well, auditing is great, but it's not. It's something that we haven't had a major issue with. So, if it was something possible, maybe we could break it down to like every two years or something. But if it's required, then it's it a lot because you're using public funds. Yeah, I mean, I figured that's why I asked. But you know, yeah. And this year we, we're spending money, a lot of grant funds. After a certain amount, you have to do a single audit. That's right. So that's why we're. That's why it's a little bit of an. I knew uh, as I asked the question, I remember that we went over this. So. Do we do <laughs> other departments as well, like say code or things like that? Do we do audit them? Mm -hmm. Is that in there it's as well? Part it's, of the audit. it's in there, so it's not just accounting. Yeah, the audit book. It, it, it's it's like a hundred pages of yeah, just like where every dollar in the there. town went. Right. And every year they come back and they're like, "You did perfect," and we're like, "Great." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it? It was some town where they fired their town manager because there was like. Two hundred dollars of gift cards missing, or something like that. And they found them after they fired them, or something. Like Some ridiculous nonsense after an audit. Yeah. Ugh. Are we good with general expense? I mean, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. see anything. Okay, we're going to 
administration, which is tab two. Thanks, Noah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything we had to change there. Negative point zero nine eight percent. Mm. So zero point eight. Yeah. So it's gone down a bit. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I there's mean, anything it's we pretty much there. pretty much a flat thing. The uh, ICMA retirement is that just because people who left uh, some the new uh, new employees aren't enrolling? We only have one employee. We have there's three of us in this budget, and there's one employee not enrolled. Okay, so that makes okay. I don't see anything outstandingly different. So. Mm -hmm. What's the one here that says negative 60% here? That's travel, travel and, training. and training. I think one of those they had, I, there was a, um, like, a, like a, I believe there was like a national ICMA conference that included like plane and stuff that I'm just, I don't think we're budgeting for. Do you think we're budgeting? Think correct me if I'm wrong on that we, one. Had, we had tuition reimbursement going out at that line, and, and that's going to be over. That's going to be over? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So where, uh, God, my eyes. Here we go, right here. So we're budgeting back for. Oh, also, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's hard on Zoom because you don't know when you're going to interrupt. But <laughs> That's okay. We, I, last fiscal year, I moved money from that line to contracted services because we bought, brought Betsy on in the middle of the fiscal year or the beginning of the fiscal year, but but not for, not before we had already um, decided the budget. So I had moved some of that money out of there. Okay. So what I'm asking you, James, is we have we have some new department leaders. We have some new employees. Um, both Patty has new employees. You got your new HR person. Um, I know in finance things are constantly changing. Um, you have ten thousand budgeted for training and travel. Um, do you feel like that's enough? I think so because that that is for the three employees in the. Oh, so it only covers those three employees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I think. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I was thinking that everything else I think falls under each department. Yeah, each, each department. Each, each department right. has its own training and travel. Okay. Budget. That makes that makes better sense to me now because I was just thinking, you know, we for, for the entire town hall so problem. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Okay. For the entire town. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. What's next, James? Article 9, which is tab 3, town clerk, 397,992, 5.5% uh, increase, 20,580 overall. A lot of that's just wages and uh, increasing a part-time position a little bit. Uh, so in the part-time, there's the PA caseworker, and then there's a float position to cover absences. So the part-time went to full-time? It's, it's just the part-time increase in hours. Okay. Really the only difference is wages and materials and supplies went up. It always does in the general election year. Yeah. And then she usually dips back down after. Yeah. Yep. I did catch on to that before. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh. I came up with nice patterns. <laughs> Any questions about town clerk? Nope. Not like that. James, what's next? Article 10, tab 4. This is the planning department. Yep. So that would in include the proposed new position with the Director of Economic and 
community development and planning. Yep. Which is proposed to be a, a director, a department head of the department. That'd be the department head of the thing. Yep. So which would oversee um, you know, when when I first started working here, the director oversaw code, would oversee planning, planning board, assist planning board. Um, some oversight of MRI as well, assessing, help assessing with their budget, overseas in vision work as well. So um, under this budget, under the planning budget, it's it's planning, code, and community development as well. Mm -hmm. So okay, and all right. And the and the planning development, you're saying that person would become the department leader. Yep. Yes. Planning and development. Well, right now there is no department leader, really. Is it it's, well, it's, yeah, it's it's just Irish, right? Yeah, they report to they both report to me. So Directly no, to the town manager. Yeah, there's right? no department head. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and besides yourself, as town manager, is there any other town employee or town director that's overseeing in Vision Berwick, or is it just you right now? Mostly we're speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Envision Berwick is on this too. Okay. We don't have any staff that's currently overseeing it. And for the longest time, we had Tom as a select board liaison to the Envision Berwick, which is always nice to have. Is Envision Berwick part of this budget, or is it part of something else? It's, it's a separate budget. Separate they're, ones. They're a separate yeah. budget. They're the separate budget. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this new proposed position. Sorry, I'll find it. So uh, under contracted services, you've taken out twenty thousand. So that's what we currently are paying for the what is it called? I can't remember. SMPDC. Yeah. Yep. So the, uh, so the new planner would take over their responsibilities, and that's why that's yep. twenty thousand lower. Yeah. There would be this um, primary plan reviewer for planning board, generating memos, findings of facts, and planning board staff support. Go to all the planning board meetings. Yep. We don't. Uh, I'm trying to look really like what. <coughs> I, I don't see anything. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, I don't see anything in here specifically. Um, plans, schedules, organized works, activities to ensure. I don't see anything in here about the supervisory responsibilities, like spelled out. And, and I'm really looking at it fast, so I could be missing it. It says supervises preparation and copying, that kind of stuff, but you just said this is going to be a department leader position. Correct. Yep. yep. So there should be something specific in here regarding supervisory responsibilities of the following positions. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't want to hold it up, but we would want that to be added before we post it. Well, this isn't going to be... This is not going to be posted until after this budget passes anyway. That's what I'm saying. So. I don't want to hold the budget process up, but no, no. he just said that, so I'm telling James, can yeah. you please have Betsy look at that? Absolutely. No. Right. And make sure that those things are added to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking all? you, I mean, those three departments, there's a lot going on there. Envision Berwick and Code, that's a lot. I yeah. mean, is yeah. that something you feel comfortable taking? Thank you for that position. It's... It, the direct, any director is busy, so that's that would be the responsibility of that position um, to, yeah, we I think it's, it's yeah. We We're shouldn't not. be discussing that yeah. because the position hasn't been posted yet. Right. The position doesn't exist it's yet. It doesn't <laughs> exist, yeah, it doesn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, definitely a, it's, it's something that that position would be able to take on. The, 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 the director of Code planning, economic development, great management. I think that's definitely the wheelhouse of that position. Yeah. So um, just make sure that this, you know, definitely does go through 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 Betsy and everything, but also make sure it adds in that they'd be supervising code and in or in, or, yeah, those, or those things. whatever. Yeah. What would you describe Envision Berwick as the 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 comprehensive planning implement, implementation? Yeah. Committee? Yeah. So planning, code, range. planning and development, and Envision Berwick. 
just to make sure that or and subcommittees or and sub yeah. subcommittees in case and, it ever changes. And I don't, I'd say I don't know if I see it here as well, but make sure also it says attends all planning because board of anything. meetings because those meetings are definitely required. So if yeah. we have to sit through them, so do they. Yeah, I just <laughs> right. want something that establishes a position as a department leader position. Yeah. So when there's a department leader meeting, that person is yeah. there as opposed to mm -hmm. the code and all of that. Yeah, make sure it specifically says d d department leader right. position. And that way when there is a management meeting, the person who gets that position would be there as opposed to code. all these individual people. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be good to just throw it again. Have the one yeah. person. Yeah, for sure. The yeah, is a supervisory position. position, yes. But it's if it's intended, write it in. Huh? That it is a supervisory And my position. only other question, James, yeah, was yeah. that part that but I had written about that. with... Yeah, it didn't have any. Um, yeah. What was it here? What was it? The 2000... Where was that? Oh, where did it go? The email? Yeah. I got it right here. Sure. Yeah, the... T oh, I don't have the exact amount. Oh, here it is. $2,567 was a wage increase um, for planning. And um, I, I just wonder if you could explain that a little bit more. I, I was kind of confused as to why it went up. Sure. Um, there was a personnel change in the middle of the fiscal year, and we had to hire somebody at a slightly higher rate because they came with more experience. Oh, uh, I remember this. When the person left, what we had originally had it oh, posted at wasn't. Gotcha, gotcha. We couldn't yep. get anybody because gotcha. the recruiting, okay. we couldn't get anybody. I okay. remember this. So. so we had to post it higher than what was budgeted in order to because. recruit someone because okay. we couldn't get anyone to even apply. And that was my yep. question. Yep. That's what I, I remember. remember. That. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I didn't remember that originally. So I'm sorry. But now that we <laughs> we're talking about it, I'm like, that's right. No one applied for a mm -hmm. long period of time. Okay. So we had to increase it. Okay. And because it was mid-year, it wasn't in the budget. Correct. Got it. That makes sense now. Any other questions about the planning budget? Because this is a new position, do we have to vote separately to add the new position, or does it just get included in this budget? It just gets included in the budget, I think. We, okay. Mm -hmm. by, by, when the, it, as long as the budget passes, yeah. then we would be able to create it, 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 okay, is, so it, it is required. Okay, so it doesn't require a separate vote. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and also, to be fair, the town planner was a position that existed up until, uh, up until you know, uh, it, James became town manager, and then we just pass up that responsibility to being contracted work. Right. So the position existed before and technically still exists. It's just unfilled. Well, we never voted to eliminate the position. Just change the name? Well, no, no, we never, no, we no, never, no, no. We never I filled just, it. I just 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 oh. the, planning, the planning piece of this position existed yeah. before, but we have made this position a little bit more robust. With, the, with the community it. and yeah. economic development. Yeah. Yeah. So this position is all new, and it, it just incorporates the previous planning position. Um. Let's say that it does involve a vote, but we had we should wait for the budget to pass sure before we do the vote. Um, and and I don't have a preference either way. Yeah. I just know it can be done either way. I know, for example, with the county, if we have a new position, it just gets voted on and approved during the budget. Yeah. And and we don't have to do it separately. But I um, went to a town meeting um, with one of my siblings in their town. It had to be separate, and so I'm just asking for clarification. I don't have a preference. I guess way. ask Patty and find out, because sure. she would know best. I yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I mean, I, we're gonna we, we we're gonna approve the warrant. That would be a right. vote. That would be our vote to approve the position. The town will vote on the warrant. That'd be their vote to approve mm -hmm. the position. Right. If it needs to be separate, then I would say that we'd probably have to wait until the budget passes so that there's money for the position. To understand right. that there is, yeah, yeah. financing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it can be passed in it because it would be included mm -hmm. as long as when the budget is posted, the description, updated yeah. description is yep. included. Yeah, get that revised. Right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. After planning, what are we looking at? Still on tab four, assessing. The only thing that increased was... Equipment maintenance yeah. and internet service. It's 
the equipment maintenance that's from our assist our um, vision um, assessing database software. Yeah. And I imagine and vision is the is the web database, right? Yeah. Where everybody can find their tax cards and everything. Yep. yep. Well that's kind of required to keep going then. <laughs> Article um, so yeah, it's just contract of services and contract MRI mapping that updates our tax maps. Um, Article 11, that was, we just did. Article 12 is tab 5. The main tab increase five. here, custodial service, we have the same janitor for a generation. He retired, and we just we've now we've gone to a new service, and they cost more. Yep, and they seem to be doing a really good job. It seems to be they really have a good attention to detail so far. We did a little research into, because I know there's questions about electrical and things like that, um, about the past. Some of that was tracked to a lot of rate increases. Lisa, you did a lot of that legwork. Do you want to add anything on that? That was so long ago. Let me think. Um, a, a lot happened, so if, if we couldn't really compare apples to apples there, because, like for instance, last year, we had to replace an underground tank, so we had the um, we had the above ground tanks with K1 in them, so that was more expensive. And then we switched from um, we went from Constellation to Berwick Solar in that time. And what were the other things? Let me see if I can find my spreadsheet. Um, it, it just wasn't easy to figure out why, except because there were so many variables that happened during that period, like the last four years of time. Well, long story short, we, sure, we updated the actual figures because I think last, the, the very first initial budget we presented, it was just under what the actual was. So just a little digging to find out what was what. It's always hard to just guess at numbers like that, mm -hmm. when, you know. Any questions about town hall? So, oh, Go ahead. no. I just found my I just found my spreadsheet. So, in fiscal 2020, the heat pumps were installed in November 2019. So that made a difference, and then in the elect in both the electricity and the um and the heat and then in fiscal 2022 berwick solar came online in july 2021 so that's when constellation went away and then um in fiscal 23 is when we had the oil tank change with the k1 and the outdoor tanks so hopefully going forward, we have all those issues solved and we'll see a better trend of what what the actuals are. Well, assuming there's no more upheaval about it. Right. The only constant is change. All right, what's after Town Hall? Um, we don't necessarily, necessarily need to flip to the tab, but Article 13 in general assistance does the 30,000. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, Article 14, that's tab 6 for police. This budget adds uh, to half of an officer for half of a year, meaning we hire January 2025. Um, so that would add an officer. James, can we go back to general assistance for just a second? Sure, sure. So we're going 
2023, we spent, I'm looking at rent assistance, household personal assistance. So we budgeted for 12, we spent 22. We budgeted for 13, we spent seven. Wow, difference. In 2025, we're budgeting for 18, too. Kind of, is, are you just looking, is there a reason for that, or are you just kind of hedging your bet you somewhere in the middle? some of that back. That's yeah. what, I think that's what like happened like over the last quite a lot of it So it's, it's what she thought, how we could increase it, but then also account for what percentage of that came back. That we're going to get yeah. back. Yeah. We and, get a lot I mean, of it back. I, 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 and those numbers, I, 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 James, correct me They're wrong. very variable, yeah. Patty is the one that, that chose the numbers, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I would trust her judgment on the... Oh, yeah, me too. Uh, I just I was mean, curious. In terms of what she's seeing, you know, in the, in the mm -hmm. field, as it were. But, I mean, like, that's 7,000 year to date. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's... so. That's what I mean. We, yeah. So it was this huge jump. Yeah. And then it literally well, flipped uh, itself. No, it's not. Some, and then some of it, too, was yeah. um, no, the rent that's assistance year to date. that, like... So we no, that it's as of 1231 COVID. up here. No, no, no. I'm oh. not talking there. I'm talking... Uh, here under 2023, we budgeted for 12, we spent 22. Yeah. And then 24, we budgeted for 13, we spent seven. We've only spent seven so far. So far. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. probably right on that number. Yeah. So, so we're going to go It's probably closer 000. to 10 or, 10 or yeah. 11 right now. Okay. But I think 22, 22 to 23 was like a lot of that um, cannot evict COVID all of a sudden yeah. went yeah. away. And there are people that she had to help out so that they Got could it. get back to school. Yeah, it was 2023 that, that the rent yep. assistant ended. Yeah, like and I think that's where we saw that jump. So that's that why she it was jumped under. out. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, because yeah, cause I dealt with it from all of 22, and then yep. it ended in, like, November of twenty of 2022, beginning of 2023. It ran out of yep. money. So and that's when it ended. And issues end. that summer. And then the, the eviction moratoriums ended and all that stuff. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there was ever, I don't know if, do we have an eviction moratorium or is it just like, the courts are so backed up, you're never going to get to see the judge. I think that was, you know I think that was it. it. Was, yeah. It was a close. close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's like, my brother's like, like I would evict him, but I'm not going to get a court date for three months. So I don't know what to do. You know? <laughs> Actually, as of today, there's been $15,344 spent out of that rent line. Wow. So, really? Yeah. We're 93.5% spent in that budget this year so far. It's only March. Yeah. Yeah. Three I months to go. Three, three months, months to go. Pretty close. Yeah. I kind of wondered who was Yeah, it's going to be pretty close. According to Patty, like, once you get to about April, that's when she sees a lot of, like, large electricity bills. Because yeah. Because people mm -hmm. didn't pay over the winter because they can't turn it off. But then they... Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you get to the... You get to the April, they can shut you off if you don't pay. So that's when she gets those bills. Yeah. So. Got it. That's what she said. All right, so we were on police. Yep, that's tab six. Um, the DEA agent is phasing out, heading towards yep. retirement. So the, kind of the idea would be, as the DEA agent, he does half a year, winds down, and the other half, the police officer, gets hired in January 2025. Okay. We hope. Yeah. Uh, everything is screwed there. Well, that's required. I did see they did increase their training budget. Not much, but it's good to see. Yeah, I always like to see it when they yeah, do more training. training all the time. It's it's not necessarily better in that sense. It's There's just so that much going on. the laws change so yeah. much. You got to be up to date. You got to recertify yeah. that. You know, and, and you do that for good good reason. Equipment maintenance. Let's see. Nothing. I mean, I'm not saying anything's wrong with our police. I think they're great. I think, I just think they always need to be in training. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, no, no, it's no, like no. being a not. doctor. You know Everything's you constantly. You can't, I agree you, with you, you can't just go to medical school and then be a doctor for the next 40 years and not get any more training. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing with police. Like, you can't just get out of, you know, you have to be, keep going to training. It has to be ongoing. Professional development. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Boy, that boy, that hits us too, huh? Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't see anything that stands out. No, no. James? Our fire department is tab eight. So that is adding two full time positions. And what we're doing is we're uh, reallocating the two per diem positions. So that's why you see the decrease of the 95,775. And that's getting moved into the full time wages part. Yeah. And then you just see the wages reflect with um, retirement and health insurance. And the chief came in and explained all that. Yeah. 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 Everything else looks pretty copacetic. That's, How about uh, that's building maintenance. Mm -hmm. Electricity. Yeah. He's still budgeting for the firefighter incentive. Doesn't look like he's used much of it. He used, he, I mean, he used, he used a little bit. 20, 2024 year to date says he used all of, almost all of it. Yeah. 18,516 out of 19,000. Oh, I'm, nope, you're right. <laughs> I'm looking at one year to the next year, but it's not. It's the two, what they've spent. Sorry. Yeah. Time is it? <laughs> <laughs> Time to go home. Yeah. All right. What's after fire, James? Public works is tab 8, article 16. <sighs> so okay, just wait a um, part time position, but full time. Yeah. We're looking at going down in salt a little bit. And then the big difference is just from the lead times, we had our lease items go down quite a bit last but last fiscal year. And it's just going back up. I imagine we didn't spend a lot on salt this year. No. There's like four storms, and they're all in February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Year to date, as of. December twenty five thousand. I'm just gonna guess that. we didn't spend a lot more than that. I'm gonna say because we had. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have. So he spent twenty five thousand on snow on salt then, and then we didn't have a storm un until basically February, yep. where we had like three or four. No, we had one in December. Yeah, but that's already in here. Yeah, that yeah. we already covered under this. Right. So. We spent. <laughs> excuse me. We spent sixty five thousand. <clears throat> excuse me. This year. And so that's yeah, and that that's, covers all January. February, yeah, that's yeah. a a third of the whole budget yeah. of it. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So. Well, so if we get some money so this year, yeah, we get that freak March uh, snowstorm. It'll be heavily salted. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. right. That <laughs> should be well covered. <laughs> uh, Article eighteen is just the next page. That's the transfer station. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have a current. Um, Contracted with um, desert trash waste management, is it? Yep. Yep. Mike, you you asked oh, yeah. before. So, yeah, like, just do we ever put that out to bid? And okay, so that's just it good. was put out to bid. I mean, um, I know waste is pretty much it around <laughs> here, but I didn't know if any of the like shipping or anything else that goes out. The is, smaller that's companies, the smaller stuff that we use. But I know, yeah, we did like the, the for the big one for the big waste for yep. waste management that went went out to bid. I'm guessing seven or eight years ago. Um, but the other ones, all, we, sh we should. Yeah, just, just to see what's there. I mean, and again, it may be who we choose to go with again next year or whatever, well, but if it's... Passive places, like, I mean, the, it'll be like the smaller companies, they'll come and take your stuff and they give it to waste management. So, you know, yeah. you're, yeah. you're just adding in a middleman to the project. Mo mostly. You're, you're talking about like, the other waste too, right? Yeah, like the, the, the recycled, the, I think the wood chipping, the brush, all that, because yeah, there was like all? seven different sub people that we do. And, yeah. Like I said, wait, waste is it for the the big stuff, but everything else, yeah, you know, for paying a haul off. I mean, it might be time to invest in a chipper and <laughs> give it to people looking for it. We're just on transfer station. It's the next next page. Still, still in the tab. That one was more my curiosity than you know. <laughs> Any. Mm. When it's public money, you always just throw it out to bid, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, better safe than sorry. Yeah. You know? The next article, Article 19, that's recreation, it's tab 9. Oh, with this, we use um, recreation revenue, so the budget overall is 478870 
with the 190,000 offset, the taxpayer is paying 288,870. What article number is that you said? That would be article... 19. 19. Okay. That's basically how it's written for the article, for the article, mm -hmm. for the warrant article as well. Mm -hmm. We, we included a little bit of funds this year for undergrads maintenance. The intent behind that is to start doing more work in our parks, the ping pond, the kayak launch, um, and through user fees. So last year was one of the first years we had user fees that helped offset some of that item as well to be able to keep up with our maintenance program. I have a question about the user fees. Um, we're appropriating 190000 which is a good, nice, round number, which makes me think that it's not the totality of that account. What's actually in that account? The, uh, Lisa, do you know the number? Lisa, what's currently in RECs? What, um, uh, let in me, yeah. let me tell you, hold on a second. I oh, just yeah, no did problem. February's reports today. So, it's a little bit more than a little bit more than that, and then the money is coming in now for summer camp. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so it's starting to roll in pretty good. Okay, well, I'm just wondering if there's like a a policy reason or choice or rule for how much we appropriate or how much is set aside or you know, like. So right now is well, as of February, as of February, um, the end of February, there's one hundred and twelve thousand in the account. Okay, that's the user fees. Uh, user fees? Yeah. You mean re the rec reg registration fees? Yeah. Registration fees. Yeah. Yeah. What, what yes, one hundred and twelve thousand. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So by June we should have one hundred ninety thousand in there. Is, is, is what the projection is, mm -hmm. and then we pull that into the budget. Okay. Okay. Just what do we do if there's not one hundred ninety thousand? <laughs> hmm. I mean, I, I just hypothetically. That's what I asked James. <laughs> he assured me it will be there. Yeah, based on the last registration, it's it, they already. Yes. Yeah, yeah, if you're they're, already getting a good response, then they're, they're the cheapest. Yeah, like, around. yeah. I mean, it's really, uh, it's really. <laughs> every week, I have thousands of jaws coming into that account right mm -hmm. now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just. Playing devil's advocate, you know, but if if something happens and it's not one hundred ninety thousand in there, do we have to wait for there to be one hundred ninety thousand in there? Do we have to, sale. <laughs> to do a <laughs> recreation bake sale? Okay. Well, we can only we can only transfer what we have. So yeah. Josh, right. will, Josh will start mowing other people's lawns. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll run them out. <laughs> Any other questions about rec? No. To have. 11 is the library, Article 20. Uh, this is a part-time position going full-time and the increased hours variable to open full day on Thursday. And then there are just some items that were removed because the Library Association is responsible for Building and grounds maintenance. Any questions about library? No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for everyone. What's next, James? Article 21, tab 12. This is just the, the bonds we owe. Um, it's the fire trucks and auditorium windows, clock tower, and then the fire station. So it's just the debt we owe. Yeah. Tax. I did have a question. I, I, I just kind of wondering. 
So the school went up 6.5. What's the process or, um, you know? With the school, that's what we're, we're kind of, we're just trying to get a picture of the overall budget. Kind of like we you put in 5% but it, for a county, but we think it's, it's actually gonna be 7.5% for county. Okay. So we just, we've estimated a number just so while we're budgeting for the overall budget, you know, if we think the school is going to come in at, you know, X, then we know, like, if we want to come in at a certain increase overall, then we would adjust our budgets accordingly. So just as we're kind of on the initial meetings with departments, just having a figure in, in mind, knowing that if the school comes in at 7.5%, we all need to, you know, that that was just the, the, the strategy going in of just... Okay. Looking at that number. Okay. Because seven and a half percent to the school, you're already looking at over five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I got word today that they're already above seven like their initial first budget cut, they're well above seven and a half percent. Really? But that was the first cut, so you know, the first draft, so now they're they'll start cutting it down. We're laying it down. So. So they don't kill her. So everybody doesn't kill them, you know. Like, so they they just. Heart at the my point. understanding is la their last school board meeting, which was I believe last oh, week. Yeah, last week they had their first budget meeting. So they're going to go through. I think by April they'll have an actual budget. Where is the uh, school on? Where is the education on the on the Warren article? It's, gonna... it's a. S it's part of the debt service one. Twenty one. Is it? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. It, the school. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the school? I don't know. School's not the a school is a separate. It's a separate. separate uh, right. Warren. It, I mean, it's a yeah. Yeah, it's a, a separate, separate vote. Separate vote. Yeah. The yeah. budget itself is a that's separate. A, yeah. that's, Sorry, that's in November, right? No. It's, okay. it's also in June. It's is it, June. Is it yes. June? Okay. So you mean it's a separate line, Lisa, or? No. It, no. This is the, the only thing itself. we're doing. We're, the only line. reason that the. Um, we project. The county and school are mentioned in these budget processes is so that we can pro so that we can project what the total overall budget is to okay. figure out. Like what our tax commitment is going to be, yeah, right, yeah. what our what our possible tax rate is going to be. So all you're doing is you're you're working on the town, the municipal budget only, and the school and the county, where well the people vote on the school separately, and the county is voted on by the county, and they tell us what it is, right? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> So they're okay. So we don't have a choice. That's what I was kind of asking. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, why so they get their own. They vote. tell us yeah. Yeah. line to vote. They get their own yeah. warrant. We just we just we put, a really line, we put a line in. But if you want to be part of the budget process, you can go to this caucus <laughs> <That's right>. and, <laughs> and and be part of that. It doesn't look like they'd like conservative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so what's the after debt service? Article 22, <laughs> this is a public agency, it's a tab 13. Um, as proposed, it's 1200 for Memorial Day, which provides funding for the parade and for flags. And then $500 for the Seacoast Shipyard Association, which says just they, they advocate to keep the ship, shipyard open. And then 29000 for the Coast Bus. Uh, I don't know, Linda, did you get... I didn't get those sheets, yeah. Let me see if I can. That's the, the emails that were going mm -hmm. back and forth. And I got those emails. <laughs> well, because they misspelled my email. But. So the fiscal year 23 estimate for ridership, yeah. Route 100, which is the shipyard route, was 365. So that's total number of riders. The whole year? The whole year, so that's that's the shipyard one. That's the park and ride up right here. Okay. They're not affiliated with any of the other mini buses. That there's dozens that. Get, yeah, get I see somebody down there. where I live. Yeah. And then Route One, which is like the the route that's right across Town Hall, is part of Route One. Okay. That ridership was one thousand nine hundred ninety six. And then Rad told me um, that the fiscal year ridership as a whole is up by thirty seven and a half percent. And twelve and a half percent, respectively. Uh, 
And I think that will go up. Mm. Um, and if it doesn't, we can cut it next year. <laughs> no, I, I think as the all these apartments come in to mm -hmm. me, yeah, absolutely, they're, they're going to start using it even more. Public transportation is very important. I mean, the, mm -hmm. Town lot public transportation is barely a town, so it's so, so hard yeah. to get around for people. Mm -hmm. It's just like sometimes you have a car so long you forget. Some people don't have them. Um, James, just to clarify, on American Legion Post seventy nine, I know you said flags and all that kind of stuff. Does that include the annual person of the year dinner? So with the citizen of the year dinner? Citizen of the year, thank you. We funded through contingency the full okay. amount. Um, so we won't that's why we're not funding it this year. And I don't think we're gonna I don't I think we'll be funding it next year. I, okay. It might have yeah, it's every other year. Every other year, yeah. So, so we've sad. already we so it just means we have to do a separate vote to take it out of contingency later when it comes up. Already already done. Right, but I mean the next time it's well, not going to be next time the we'll put it in the budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on public agencies? I'm good. Thanks. The next one is under uh, transfers. That's tab 15, public fire protection. That's part of our PUC. It's the number we have to do <coughs> for hydrants. That's Article 23. Article 24. This is the amount of money we raise for by. Um, through taxes, appropriate through taxes for road construction. And Article 25 is using the undesignated fund balance to replace the fuel pumps and the software. That's a capital project. We have some obsolete equipment out there. And Article 26 is a piggyback of Article 24, basically, where those funds are combined for the same use, same purpose for road construction, and that money comes from our undesignated fund balance. James, can you just remind me, under the road projects, I know for 25 we're doing 300000 What did we do last year? 200000 mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it? Two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. What's okay? Yep. <clears throat> then, Article Twenty Seven was the capital request from fire, so that's a total of one hundred five thousand dollars. We're saving some money for a truck replacement, personal protective equipment. Federal capital request from chief plant. And then Article 28 is or the police department um, capital request. The intention for this fiscal year is to outright purchase vehicles, try to move as much as possible away from policing. Yeah. Article 29, um, talking with two property owners that are abutting public works for the public work expansion. So this gives the ability for the select board to negotiate into a purchase and sale agreement. And Article 30, $75,000 for memorial field improvements for recreation and capital improvements, which are intended to go to memorial field. And then Article 31, those are town hall improvements, 135500 um, to fix the clock tower railing. It's falling apart. Um, do some waterproofing of our bricks. New security system that's needed. And just some minor bathroom improvements. And it includes the savings 
for the event to replace, for the, those stairs. to replace the front steps. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Article 32, that's just uh, transfer station building preserve. $10,000. Article 33 is $50,000 for match funds. And then uh, those are all from undesignated fund balance. And Article 34, that's from uh, raising appropriate from taxes, $10,000 for contingency. So that's for un un unanticipated expenses and emergencies. How much was it last year? It was ten thousand, okay. but our balance right now is about ninety thousand. Okay. Which will, you know, we could use that pretty quickly. Yeah. Article thirty-five. This has always been the Envision Berwick um, account. We, it's for economic development purposes. Twenty-one thousand three hundred sixty-five. See, that's that's what I was thinking. Economic development. The the job posting would be. Say it's supervisor role or economic development committee. Absolutely. That 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 way at least they're in sync. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. that's that's what I think that should say. You know, supervisor planning. You know, department head planning. Yeah. Supervisor yeah. code yeah. and everything yeah. like that. Supervisor back on the <laughs> development committee. Things like that. Yeah. Not that off topic. Keep no, going. We, we said subcommittee. So. Subcommittee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were getting all fancy. No, he's getting all fancy. Yeah. In Article Thirty Six, Digital Communications Branding and Brand Branding and Signage, twenty thousand two hundred and sixty. Then Article Thirty Seven, ten thousand dollars for emergency management. So that's for the cots or blankets or yep. materials, anything needed for an emergency. How much was appropriated last year for that? Six thousand. Okay, that's the one. That's the one that I wanted, I wanted to make sure went went up. Yep. Yeah, that, and that's a carry forward. So anything not expended carries forward. It accumulates. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen thousand uh, three ten for Article Thirty Eight. This is for our MS Four engineer, Christy. We've had her for ten plus years. She's great. She makes sure we stay in compliance. She advocates for us. She writes our reports. She does inspections for us. She does public. Awareness campaigns. In Article 39, uh, that's BCM. So we can actually go to BCM. That's tab 14. The idea with, it, with this, and something we talked about a little bit last year, was increasing the taxpayer share as we anticipate franchise freeze fees reduce to keep the department sustainable. So the overall budget for the BCM department is 193425 using 123425 Comcast franchise fees for a sum that we're appropriating from taxes of $70,000. Any questions on BCM? No, not for me. Article 40, that's a long-standing water bond that the town pays half of. Um, that we took out in 1999. That's 21,634. Article 41 is authorizing the use of the Lena Clark interest which was 13478 We haven't used Lena Clark interest in a while, so it's just accumulating, which is good. We will, we'll need it soon enough, but. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Use interest only from this mm -hmm. for. We don't, we don't touch the account. We just, any of the money. Says, no, no, no. I'm just saying that it says, it says authorize the use of interest only from this account for major repairs or maintenance needs of the town hall. It's, I mean, are there. Is it going, or is it, the way it's worded makes it sound like we're going to take this money out of the bank, out of a bank account, put it into a different bank account, and hold on to it in case there's an emergency. No, it's just like, is there, 
Yeah. A specific thing that we're spending the money on? It's just no, all. usually usually if um, if something unforeseen comes up, this is the way it has been in the past. If un something unforeseen comes up, we ask the board to um, vote to approve spending the taking the Lena Clark interest and using that for the expense. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, well, I, 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 that's the way I recall it, so I don't understand why there's a, 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 a article for it. It's just, it seems... Uh, it just well, not, must, well, We have to ask the people every the year to just us to that make sure that... We have to actually spend that money. Right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so, Organization to spend. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's been there all the time, and I just missed it. Got it. Article 42 is using $250,000 of our fund balance to offset the tax rate. It also helps us mm -hmm. assist us stay under, or at least reduce our tax levy, levy of LB1. Okay. Yeah. Then Article 43, it's um, dissolving the firefighter contingency reserve. So we're, in effect, like we're adding two staff. Um, so we're basically using it. And this is, in my mind, that's how it works in my head. So Article 43 is using that contingency funds, and the way we do that is we have to dissolve the account and then just ask the voters to um, use that 30000 to offset the taxes. That was a really convoluted way of explaining that. Eight and a half percent. Yep, 44 charge, uh, setting the interest rate at eight and a half percent. What was it last year? Uh, I think it's six and a half. Yeah. The state treasurer's office sets it. Yeah. We can we can go lower, but we usually just set it at whatever the treasurer's the state treasurer's office sets it at. No, I think it should it should it should match the state for yeah. consistency. I just. You know, going up two percent in a year, and then you know, I, I going back five years, I bet it was like two percent. You know what I mean? So, just ridiculous. Pay your taxes. Inflation. Yeah. <laughs> Marco forty-five is six percent. Did anybody catch any? Punctuation errors, or you know, any typos or anything when you get corrected? Uh, I did, but I back out here. All right, uh, any questions, concerns, follow up about the budget? No. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. That was good that we went over that. Yeah, Sorry, I thought we were off the thing. Now we have to move to go to an executive session. Is it possible to ever be done early? Is that something that we can do? No. Sure. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yes, yeah, so we're all set. No more broadcasts.